Hey everyone, Disappointed Giant here. This video is going to be different than my other videos. This is a live, <laughs> one take, unedited cut of a melee tier list for Dead Cells version 3.4. Um, over the past few videos, I've had some folks make some comments and say, hey, is this item good? Or what do you think of this item? And, you know, I've responded to those and I have my opinions, but I thought it would be kind of cool to take some time to go through at least one subsection of items in Dead Cells and just kind of give some opinions on what I like about it, uh, what I may not like about it, why do I use it, why don't I use it, those kind of things. So I figured this would be cool. Um, I do not have a script. <laughs> I do have a Google Doc with some notes in here. Uh, okay, so this is uncut. I'm not going to do any. I haven't written this out. Uh, I'm not going to, as you can probably already tell, I'm not going to cut things and change the audio and everything like that. So we're just doing it live. Um, I'm not going to rank these by what I think is quote unquote best. Uh, so if you check this out, I've actually changed the tier list stuff from S down to D to how often I use it. Um, so if I, there's an item that I love, I put it in the always category where if I see that pop up in the shop or come out of a chest, I almost, you know, I basically always will grab it. Um, and then you kind of make your way down to items I like to use, items I'll pop in sometimes. And then at the bottom are items that I don't normally use, um, maybe once out of every couple dozen and if they show up out of a chest and it's a specific situation, I'll grab them. But, you know, things down here I usually don't use. Um, and again, these are just my personal preferences. This isn't, this item's good, this item's bad, do this, don't do that. Uh, again, I'm just ranking it by how often I will take the item. And as I've said in my tutorial video and a couple other videos, you know, it's good to experiment and to try everything. So just because I rank something in my always category, that doesn't mean it's a quote unquote good item, right? It's just something that I like to use. And just because I might put something in the not often or rarely section, that doesn't mean it's a bad item and you shouldn't use it. Um, this is just kind of meant for me to get some thoughts out there, maybe help some folks out. And, you know, selfishly afterwards, I can kind of look at my own tier video and my own tier list, I should say, and see where I haven't been experimenting as much and see what items I could use more, right? So if something's in that not often or see, yeah, not often or rarely section, maybe that's something I should grab the next time it pops up in a shop. Or maybe that's something I should do a custom run to focus on just to see, all right, you know, I don't use the tentacle a lot, so let's only unlock that and see how it goes, right? Because part of, part of Dead Cells is just learning and experimenting and seeing what does what and how it interacts with other things. And, um, you know, I think that's something that I could also use some help with. Finally, yes, I'm going to go through the main weapons of the base game first. So that includes all of the old classic weapons, the everybody's here weapons, all the show, the uh, crossover items, all of those things. So that way, if you do not have any DLCs, you can focus on this first chunk of the video. And then what I'll do after that is I'll move over to the DLC items in order, uh, meaning I will do Bad Seed and then, uh, what is it, Fatal Falls, Queen in the Sea, and then finally Return to Castlevania. I'll put timestamps down below depending on <laughs> how long this ends up going so that way you can go down and just click a certain section. Um, and finally, I didn't write this here, um, but I'm going to make a quick note as I start talking about it. I am not ranking these in order of how I like them. So for example, if there's five items in the always, left to right doesn't mean the one on the left is what I use the most and the one on the right is what I use the relative least. I'm just going to put them in alphabetically so that way there's no real hierarchy to those as far as that's concerned. Um, so that way you can look at the list, you can see a bunch of items. The third one is just as cool as the fifth one, which is just as cool as the first one. Doesn't really matter that way. Okay. So with that, let's let's go. <laughs> let's give this a shot. Um, all right, so the first item I'm going to choose here um, is the Hayabusa boots. So this is dropped by, I think it's dropped by the Dark Trackers. Um, it's a 1.7 drop, which is our quote unquote normal blueprint drop. And this item's interesting. So the first two attacks are just like a couple of regular kicks. And then the third kick kind of does like a little AOE blast. Think of like a wave of denial kind of thing. And what it does is it pushes enemies away. It will push bombs away and it kind of creates a little bit of space after that third attack 
There's no crit condition here. The DPS is decent. It's fine. Um, and what I'll do... Oh, before I do this, I also have the... Wiki open. So what I can do is I can actually click on stuff and we can check it out together. So, um, yeah, so again, three hit combo. Um, the final combo does some AOE, pushes enemies away, reflects the grenades. Um, and I was right. Yep, it is dark trackers. Pretty cool. Um, interesting. It looks like you have to be on one BC or higher, which I did not know. So this weapon's okay. I think it's decent. It has its it has its um, it has its merits. I will use this item sometimes. And situations where I do tend to use this are enemies that will drop bombs in like rapid sequence. So think of the like the worms in the sewers. Uh, you know, you kill the worms and then they drop like five bombs. Or Hand of the King when he starts throwing the bombs out. I find that it's helpful for that. Um, but the fact that there's no real crit condition and the fact that the item is a little bit more situational, I use it sometimes. I think it's pretty decent. Um, but you know, when I see it pop up, I'm not running for it. Next up, let's do, uh, let's keep it going. So let's do Spartan Sandals. So um, very similar, <laughs> similar icon, uh, somewhat similar in use. Um, so the Spartan Sandals has a, I think it's like a two or three hit combo. And basically what it does is it will uh, knock enemies away. So yeah, we're looking at a three hit combo here. The kicks will knock enemies away, and this is super helpful in certain situations, such as like if you're fighting an elite that's like right up against a wall. Uh, again, if you're trying to like knock back blocks, uh, <laughs> knock back bombs, things like that. I think it's cool. Um, again, this is kind of like a specific situation where I'd use it. Um, one of the underrated ways to use this, um, I love using this in uh, levels like the promenade or the ramparts um, where you can just kick enemies off of high platforms and they get damage when they hit the ground which is great but it's also awesome for when you're fighting elites and you get them pinned up against a wall because you can kind of stun lock some elites this way so it's a cool item uh, it's interesting so several updates ago they changed its scaling from brutality only to brutality and tactics which is super interesting and I didn't really understand it at first, but it actually makes a lot of sense when you think of tactics as kind of gameplay, right? So for the most part, you want to get item enemies far away from you. You want to use things like tranquility. You want to kind of step back with your nerves of steel or your Tesla coil or whatever. And using the Spartan sandals will create that space. It makes a little bit of space. It pushes enemies back so you can get that extra DPS from tranquility. You can find a little bit more space to use your range item. So it's pretty decent. Um, and here we are, two items in, and I've already quantified them. <laughs> it's good, it's decent. Uh, this is an item I do use sometimes. Um, again, you know, it's great for elites. It's really cool in some items, some levels. It does struggle with bosses. Um, you know, it's not not the best item to take into a, you know, into the concierge or <laughs> into the giant or anything like that. Although I will say, when you do fight the giant with these, uh, you can kind of kick the eyeball around and it swings, which is pretty funny. So this is, yeah, it's an item I use sometimes. Um, another niche use for it is I like to pop it in the backpack with Porky Pack and use that as I roll around the levels and enemies will just pop into walls on their own. It's pretty cool. So I dig it. Uh, let's see. Next up, I will grab, let's grab the crowbar. So um, crowbar I will usually use. I like this item a lot. I've always liked it, um, but back in the day, the crit condition was a little small. So it used to be... Um, tactics and brutality so what you could do is you could have a melee tactics build you could run emergency door on color get all the extra damage uh damage reduction from the door and you know kind of like build around that but now that it's brutality and survival and uh, excuse me brutality and tactics and a lot of those old melee tactics mutations like predator and initiative are now brutality it doesn't make sense for them to have kept it dual scaling so right now Long story short, brutality only. And the crit condition is if you break a door, um, you will have crits, constant crits for 15 seconds. And also, it will crit on any enemy that is a, uh, what, is, what do you call it? Like a beast. A beast enemy. 
So beast enemies, uh, things like conjunctivius, uh, I think bats, rats, those kind of things. Oh, here we go. <laughs> we got the whole list right in front of us here. So all of these items, all of these enemies are bats, or excuse me, are bestial enemies. And it's interesting because I'm looking at this here and I just learned that Dracula is one of those, which is super cool. Um, so this is a in mama tick, or excuse me, giant tick and mama tick. Yeah, so these are this is a cool item to take into some boss fights, even if you don't have the doors around you for the crit conditions. In the biome, uh, there's usually a lot of doors, so you can roll through those doors and get crits for 15 seconds, regardless of whether an enemy is a bestial enemy or a regular enemy. I think it's great. Uh, like I said, I've enjoyed this, you know, since it came back out in like 1.7 or whatever it was. But it's gotten, in my my opinion, it's gotten significantly better. Um, having extra crit condition, having more time for crits is fantastic. So I use this usually. So if I grab it, I'll grab it if I see it. Um, next up, let us check out the Giant Killer. Um, so Giant Killer, on paper... Giant Killer is dope because it has four big hits, does critical hits on all elites and all bosses, but in execution, I rarely use this. And part of it is the damage is good, the crits are good, but the attack is very slow. And the issues that I have with it is, you know, the first couple of attacks are good, and then I think the third attack is the one where you kind of like jump up and like do like almost like a like a vertical circular kind of a swing before you come back down and that leaves you open to attacks so unless you're pairing this with like ice shards and kill rhythm or you know you're in a pile of enemies that take less damage so that way you're killing each enemy with your single swing so that way you're not left open this item's kind of a tough sell for me um you know there are times where i do take it so if I get this at like the 60 door after the Sepulcher and I'm going in to fight the giant and I just want to like finish a run, <laughs> I'm going to go from giant straight to hand of the king, I might grab this, you know, especially if my build is kind of so-so and, you know, I've just been kind of like dragging along, I might grab this. But overall, I don't use this too often for the reasons I just mentioned. Um, I think it's a cool concept, but at this point in time, my opinion is it should have some kind of a rework to make it more worth the worth the risk of leaving yourself open between those slow those slow attacks and the other thing too it's really interesting this is one of the items that you can't put in the backpack and i think it's funny because it's one of the least optimized <laughs> melee weapons but the devs still have this idea that it's so powerful that you shouldn't be able to roll around with it but in my opinion like that would be a great way to use it because then it would be more viable. But as it stands, I rarely take this thing. Uh, Alright, so let's do some more case-specific items. So, uh, Curse Sword. So, Curse Sword drops from Conjunctivius and it's interesting. It's super interesting because it is a brutality-only melee item that does crits with every single hit. And the crit damage is very good. Crit damage is, is wild on this thing. And... It's great. I mean, one of the more niche uses I've seen for it recently is folks who will take it into um, the 5BC boss rush stuff to get flawless because you don't want to get hit anyways and you're doing a ton of damage. So you grab this with like a stun grenade and rampart or, you know, call for rampart, like whatever it is and make your way through. I think it's a really cool item. But again, it's really specific. This isn't unless you're doing a challenge run or, you know, you're trying to get the curse sword achievement. For beating the game with the cursed sword which by the way you only have to beat hand of the king with it so you don't have to take it through the whole game although that is part of the challenge it's very specific use so i'll grab this sometimes again if i'm at a spot where i have you know maybe i have ice armor and i have foresight so i can absorb a couple of hits i'll i might take this and just shred through some biome so super cool i dig it a lot um but generally, again, it's more of a sometimes, right? I'm not always going to grab it, but I do find myself taking it more often than I expect. So that's pretty cool. All right. Fan favorite. Let's do the Panchaku. So back in, again, I think it might have been version 1.7 or 1.8. Um, Evil Empire introduced an item called the Vorpan. And what the Vorpan is, is it is a... 
single use uh, brutality melee weapon that does crits if you facing the front of an enemy. So it's basically a better assassin's dagger, in my opinion. In the early trailers, I think it might have been the Bad Sea trailers, they had uh, the beheaded was using two Vorpans tied together with a string and the community was like, hey, we want that. Give us, <laughs> give us the two pans. So eventually they did. So those are the Panchaku. And personally, I take this a lot. And the reason why I take it a lot is because it pairs so well with items like melee, uh, excuse me, mutations like melee. Um, it's great for instinct of the master of arms for crits. Um, I think it's a great item. It's really cool because the way that it swings around, it also knocks bombs back on like it's nine or 10th or something like that. It's free. You get it super early in one of the lore rooms in the prisoner's quarters after a few runs. It's a great item. I love it. I think it's really funny because it's just such like a silly thing. Cause you know, you look here and you have, you got your strong sword and you know, you got like your big boots and you know, you got all that, you got a huge ax, you get all this stuff. And then you just have a silly item where it has two pans <laughs> tied together with a piece of string, but it's fantastic. So I love it. I love the Panchaku. I take it a lot. Um, unfortunately, you know, in fights where enemies don't have fronts, so conjunct, giant, um, you know, some other rare situations like that. It's not the best, but again, if you pair it with melee, you know, something like that, it's 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 great. I love it. And since we have it here, little little baby sibling, the Vorpan, I usually take this. I do not take it as much as the Panchaku because it's not as versatile, but something is just so satisfying about just critting enemies immediately, straight from the front, doing a good amount of damage, and this is another freebie. You can get this one from the weapon merchant if you talk to him when his pan is sparkling. It's usually after like one or two runs, I think. But it's great. You know, again, I don't use it as much as I use the Panchaku, but it is still a great item. Um, pairing it with something maybe like initiative where that first hit does extra damage can help take enemies out pretty quickly since that'll bump up that initial crit from that first hit. But overall... I enjoy it a lot. I think it's super good. And speaking of things I really like, where is it? Where's my boy? Here we go. Symmetrical Lance. So, the, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I just noticed that that's almost, those almost look the same. That's really funny. I love the Symmetrical Lance. I use this thing all the time. I will take it at the beginning of Prisoner's Quarters if I see it in the tubes just because... It does so well clearing out enemies. It's great for clearing up rats. It's easy to get the crit condition. The crits are strong. And they made it so that way in version 1.9, they actually extended the animation and the hitbox of the Lance. So it's huge. Uh, I think it's fantastic. I love it. And <laughs> in case you couldn't tell, I'm going to take this. I'm going to put this up in the always section. Uh, again, you know, these are just my my frequency of how excited I get when I see them, how often I take them. I do take this a lot. I understand it does struggle in bosses. Um, it struggles in sections where you're only fighting, you know, one giant enemy at a time. Like, you know, it's not great for the elite ticks and the morass, but overall, you know, there's generally plenty of enemies around to get the crit condition. I think it's really cool. Um, even though, you know, it's hitbox is strictly strict it's hitbox is strictly horizontal, so stuff like bats or you know, enemies that are coming from above, you know, might be a little bit more challenging, but personally, I take this thing all the time. I think it's dope. How about shrapnel axes? So shrapnel axes are super interesting. So they drop from the demons, who are the uh enemies in cavern let me see if i can find them here here we go uh and they drop from demons those are in the cavern uh, they can be in the bank they're in the <laughs> slumbering sanctuary but it's cool so the thing about this is that this is a hybrid weapon and it's interesting because when you swing the axes there's like what is it five yeah there's five hits and all of those hits are melee hits so if an enemy is close by those melee hits will hit the enemy. But it's interesting because each melee hit also has projectiles that come out from it. 
So it's cool because you can get up close. So let's say that there's like a zombie right in front of you and then behind it is, I don't know, like a archer or whatever. You can swing your axe once or twice to kill that zombie. But if you continue your attack, that third attack will shoot the melee project, the range projectiles out, which might kill the enemies behind the enemy that you were just attacking. This is such an interesting item because at least off the top of my head, it's one of the only melee ranged combo items that I can think of, Not, you know, single-handed melee range combo. Um, I think it's really cool. I think it's super interesting. I generally will gravitate towards this because of its utility. You can take it tactics and use things like uh, Ripper, which is, which is sweet. That's a mutation where if you have projectiles in an enemy and you hit them with a melee attack, it will drop those projectiles and will do extra damage. So you can kind of just like hang back, shoot some projectiles into the enemies and then go up, hit them with the melee. Ripper, Ripper Prox does a bunch of damage. I think these are really interesting, one of a kind, and I will take them and put them in the usually because I will usually take these. Sweet. I think, I think one of the hardest parts of this video is going to be when I go to put something in a category and I have to remember the names of the items and try to sort them alphabetically. So, all right, we still have a lot. We got a lot to do. So I'm going to, I'm going to start, I'm going to start cranking here. Um, let's take the baseball bat. So baseball bat is a free item that came in with the everybody's here update version volume two. It's a, what is it, Hotline Miami crossover. It does crits on enemies that are stunned or rooted. It's incredibly powerful. It works great in a build where you can uh, take it. It's brutality survival, but you take it with survival. You do Heart of Ice, you know, Wolf Trap, Stun Grenade, uh, throwable objects. What's, what is it? Instinct, Master of Arms. Like, you do all that stuff, and then you're basically getting constant crits, constant cooldown on the items that cause the crit condition, and you can just kind of shred through things. A lot of folks use this. In my opinion, it's it's definitely overpowered. I think a lot of people think that way. But my personal opinion is like, I don't take it often because it's just kind of one note, right? It's not, for me, it's not exciting. It's one of those things that when it first came out, I used it a ton. I thought it was hilarious to like wolf trap conjunct and then get, you know, 20 crits in a row and just hear the noise and watch the numbers go flying everywhere. But personally... I don't use it that often just because I feel like it has like a really low skill ceiling for me and there are other items that I prefer more. But a lot of people have gotten a lot of wins with the baseball bat in that build that I just mentioned. So if you haven't used it or if you're trying to figure out a way to kind of like push your way through some of the earlier boss cells, that might be worth a shot. Next up, uh, let's find another uh, everyone's here item. Uh, all right, here we go. Pure Nail. So, Pure Nail is a Hollow Knight crossover. Um, this can be found in a lore room in the prisoner's quarters. It will eventually show up. It's pretty cool because all of these items, all of the everyone's here items, have lore rooms that are tied to the game that the item comes from. So this is dope because there's like a bench, like a save bench in a random room. And it's got like one of those lamps that you find in uh, Dirtmouth or Deepness. Uh, Dirtmouth, yeah, I think that's the name of the town. But it's really cool. So anyways, you sit on the bench, you get this item, and it works basically the same exact way it works in Hollow Knight. And it's really funny because I played Hollow Knight before. You know, I played it years ago. Um, you know, I used a guide to get 100 and whatever percent back in the earlier days. And I enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. And then this came out, and I enjoyed using this so much that I was like, man, I really got to play Hollow Knight again. So I played Hollow Knight again and I made it like halfway through and then I just <laughs> did a custom run in Dead Cells where all I had unlocked for melee was the Pure Knight and uh, the Pure Nail and I honestly I'm not joking I enjoyed playing Dead Cells with this more than I enjoyed playing Hollow Knight again but this was after I already completed the game like big time so but this item's great it's really interesting because it has a unique mechanic where I think at this point it's the only melee item you can use that doesn't like pin you so you can walk with it and swing with it just like you could in Hollow Knight there's like a little bit of bounce back when you hit an enemy like in Hollow Knight um, and I think Evil Empire you know they did a great job with all of uh, in, in my opinion all of these weapons are cool everything's cool um, but I think they did such a great job with some of these crossover weapons just because of how honest and how 
much respect they gave the games that they were taking the items from. So this is not just like a cheap Hollow Knight cash grab kind of thing. Like they really, they really put their work in here. The other thing that's cool about this is that it does crits if you swing up or if you swing down, which is great for, um, you know, just general usage where you can hit bats up front that are coming down from you above. Um, it's hilarious on bosses. Like you can just pogo on the concierge or pogo on the giant's eye or whatever it is. Um, I use this item a lot, so I usually take this. Um, but now that I'm talking about it, I realize how often I actually do use it. So that's not true. I will take this a lot. Um, I love it. I think it's super cool. And yeah, so there we go. That's that's how I feel about that. Let's do another crossover. How about the machete and pistol? So this is a brutality and uh, excuse me, brutality and tactics combo. So it's interesting. So it's set up as melee tactics, or excuse me, brutality tactics, but all three of the shots are melee. So it's it's weird because the first two attacks, um, if anybody has played Curse of the Dead Gods, which is where this item comes from, the first two attacks are like just like regular little sword, short sword swings. And then the fifth attack, or the third attack is a pistol shot that kind of like blasts enemies back, does critical damage, I think it's it's interesting. It's a pretty cool item, um, and it also sets item enemies on fire with that third shot, which I think some folks might overlook, including me, since I just forgot about it. It's cool. It's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty niche, though. That's the thing. So this isn't something that I personally take all the time. Um, I put some time into Curse of the Dead Gods. I think it's a cool. I think it's a cool game. I played Curse of the Dead Gods after I played Dead Cells, and when I picked up. When I picked up that game, the default items are your main weapons of machete and your secondary weapons of pistol, and it felt exactly, almost exactly as it felt in Dead Cells, where, again, just like I said with the Hollow Knight item, I was just like, wow, they really put their time in with this. I don't want to talk about legendaries, so I'm going to take a quick step back here. I'm not going to talk about the legendary versions of items, because a lot of these at this point in time, again, this is version 3.4, they're still being worked on and I don't know what's going to change and I don't want to put too much archival content out. I'd rather have more evergreen stuff where things will maybe be referable in a year or two or whatever it is. I don't want to say, oh, this legendary is awesome. And then, you know, a year from now, someone's going to check out the video and say, oh, that legendary is not the same. Like what happened? Right. So I'm not going to talk about the legendary versions of these items. So normally, the regular machete and pistol, because I do enjoy Curse of the Dead Gods, and again, this is completely personal, this is totally subjective, I will sometimes take this. Uh, again, knowing its shortcomings, it's not the best, um, but I do enjoy it. I think it's cool. I feel like other folks might pop it down here or down here, but me personally, um, I do enjoy it. And I only take it on Brutality. I'll grab it with like Melee, um, you know, something like that, just to kind of buff, you know, Melee and combo. So that way you can slow the enemies and, and get extra damage. Um, but yeah, it's decent. Let's go Classic here. How about the Balance Blade? So Balance Blade has been in the game forever. <laughs> this is like one of the earliest items in the game. I think it might have been from like the first update was it like point whatever like point one or whatever it is let me see if i can get some history on this thing uh here we go history yeah so there you go so balance blade has been in the game forever it's interesting because initially it was just an item like you can see the the attack animation here initially it was just an item that was super fast and at some point it might have been might have been version like 1.7, 1 1.8, I don't know what it was. They added a crit condition to it, which is interesting because that's not, it's not here in the history. But what it is, is that if you get 10 quick hits with this within an allotted period of time, you have criticals, which is pretty cool because it's easy to get a lot of those fast hits, especially on bosses or if you're in a biome where there's like a ton of enemies, it's, it's you know, getting 10 hits is not difficult with this. The crit condition happens and it's good personally. I love items with crit conditions that are rapid just because I love the, 
gonna sound so silly. I love the sound that it makes. I love the ding that the crits make. So I will gravitate towards weapons where I can make the ding. And generally, it's cool because the dings mean bigger damage. So, you know, it's not just like, <laughs> I'm not just seeking a certain sound, but like this is an item that feels good it's quick to use, the crits are pretty easy to get, and it pairs great, again, with stuff like melee. Um, as you can see here, Instinct is awesome. You can get crits, uh, excuse me, you can get cooldown with it pretty reliably. I dig it. I dig it a lot. It's something that I will see and I will take often if I see it. Downside of that, you know, it's not a heavier hitting item. Like if I'm looking at all of the... Yeah, so far all of these other melee items have a higher base dps than this as far as i know but it's fast it does good work i dig it another item that's been around forever is the twin daggers and this is it's interesting so this is this item is unlocked by default and i think this also has been around since like the beginning of time i'm pretty sure this was also from from the oldies yeah so this was another another old item that was introduced back in the day it's interesting because I feel like this is the precursor to other items. So this is unlocked. Like I said, it's unlocked from the from the start. So even if you just start a new game, you're guaranteed to see this at some point in the first few levels. Like for the most part, you're going to you're going to come across this. You're going to say, what's up with this? First two attacks do normal damage. And then the third hit does a crit. I feel like this is in the game to prepare you for other items that do similar things. So think of like the broadsword. Think of um, what Ma the Deep from the, what what is it? The uh, Queen in the Sea DLC. Think of items like that where, you know, it's that one, two, three, one, two, three. And it this one's really easy to use. Um, the attacks are fast. That critical is decent. You know, it's got like an interesting, and you can feel it too. Like you can feel the heaviness of that third hit as after you hit those first two attacks. So it's interesting because again, I feel like this is this is something that is there to prepare you for other things <laughs> that do this better, or not better, excuse me, that do this either with more damage or more efficiently or more excitingly. I personally do not use these a lot. I will take them sometimes. I might grab them out of the tubes if I'm going for a melee build and there's nothing else there in the prisoner's quarters, but generally I don't use it too often. And part of it too is, you know, I've been playing, my God, I got Dead Cells back when it first came out on the Switch. Uh, I think I got it version 1.0. So it was like, my God, like what, late? I'm gonna date myself here. It was like maybe like late 2018, I wanna say early 2019 if that's the time frame <laughs> maybe it was early i forget exactly when it came out but i'm pretty sure it was like late 2018 so i've been playing this for a long time and i've used these so much that it's kind of like an old friend that i just wave to as i drive by and then i keep on driving so other oldies let's do one more oldie i think um i think the swift sword's been around forever too so swift sword is awesome I personally use this a lot. I enjoy it very, very much. Ooh, so not so old. <laughs> Still early access, but not like 0.0, .0 initial release. So the Swift Sword is really interesting. So if you have a speed buff, you'll get a critical hit on an enemy. Um, there are items that you can use that have increases your speed as a uh, affix on it. Um, you know, things like whatever, Corrosive Cloud, um, Face Flask might have it, things like that, where you can create the speed boost that you need in order to get the crits on this. But if you're using in this in a biome, it's generally pretty easy to get the crits. And for me, I love one of my favorite builds of all time, even though it's not optimized and it's not meta or whatever, I will take Swift Sword and I will take Velocity as my first mutation. And then I'll take uh, Initiative, and predator and i will just shred i'll go through these biomes i will no i will enemies won't see me i'll like take an assault shield so i can move faster and it is one of the most satisfying things i love it 
in the grand scheme of things, you know, other items similar to, you know, like the symmetrical lance, um, you know, I mentioned that it's hard to get crits on bosses with that. It's the same thing here. But like I said, there are items you can use that will give you a speed boost. Um, vampirism does it. If you're in a boss fight where there's traps, so think of like the spikes in the hand of the king fight, the crystals and uh, in the giant fight, I think the swords in the timekeeper fight, those count as traps. So if you're not going for a perfect kill, you can actually get hit by a trap in that level and then get a 20 second speed boost from the masochist mutation. It's really cool. I think it's super interesting. Again, I've used this, I've literally played with this sword for years and even though it hasn't been, it's barely been changed. The damage, <laughs> the damage hasn't been touched or whatever. Um, I think it's fantastic. And again, you know, if you do choose to use the Swift Sword, it might be worth checking out the wiki to get a little bit more information on kind of like what I was just saying here. If you couldn't tell, I use this very, very, very often. Um, it's this has always been one of my faves. I dig it. I love it. I think it rules. And again, if I see that pop up early, I will completely cater my build towards it. Um, you know, it might fall off later in the run and I might kind of shift some things, but for at least those first several biomes and that first boss, like I will, I will have the best time, best time in the world. How about, um, let's check out Bone. So Bone is a Skull the Hero crossover. Uh, this was introduced, I think, in the first Everyone is Here update 2.8 or whatever it was. Can't remember. Um, it's interesting. So what it is is that you, I think you hit like, you attack twice and then after that it will do a whirlwind that has crits. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, so after you hit the enemy with the second attack, you'll start spinning. It does a lot of crits in a short period of time. And this is interesting to me. So this is one of three items that are semi-recent that do a lot of fast crits with low damage. So the first one is one we've already talked about. So the Panchaku up here. Oh, like I said, <laughs> get alphabetized. So the Panchaku, um, it does that. It has those really fast crits. The Bone is another one where after you hit that second attack, it kind of does this whirlwind where it will push you forward and will do a bunch of critical hits. I don't use this too often, and along with the third item that we'll talk about later, the Abyssal Trident, like I feel like the Panchaku does this best, and because there's an item that does something similar in my mind than this, I will generally take that instead of this. So I don't take this too often. Um, it does have some pretty decent damage. Um, it's cool, you know, if you're a Skull the Hero Slayer, fan it must be awesome to have this um, but me personally i don't often take this um, again i feel like my own oops my own play style my own vibe it there are other things that i enjoy more than the bone so i'm gonna drop it there spite sword so spite sword is a pretty niche item because it will give you critical damage if you have a curse or if you've taken damage recently. So this is a really interesting item to use with um, Face Flask, of course. Face Flask is amazing. I have a video on it. If you have, if you don't know about Face Flask and you don't know about Vengeance, please watch that video. It's It's wild. So what you can do is you can use Face Flask to take damage and then do extra crits with the Spite Sword because that damage from the Face Flask counts against, you know, it, it, it procs the crit condition here. You get a lot of damage. I don't love the move set of this. So there's basically, I think it's like two hits, two or three hits and then like a kick, I want to say. I don't love the move set. So if this was more of just like a static faster kind of a sword think of like a blood sword animation that kind of thing i would take this way more often than i do i understand the uh potential behind it and it's an amazing way to to take to get ridiculous damage so if you were to take that build i just mentioned so you got uh main item spite sword take uh face flask as your first skill corrupted power as your second skill and then take vengeance as a mutation you'll Use Face Flask to cause the crit condition on the Spite Sword. 
which will trigger vengeance, which will give you anywhere between whatever it is, 60 and 90 something percent extra damage. Use Corrupted Power <laughs> to get an extra 50% damage on top of that. And if you have any synergies, like if Corrupted Power, say Corrupted Power creates a toxic cloud around you and Face Flask electrocutes enemies and you have plus 80% to poison and plus 40% to shocked or electrified enemies on the Spite Sword, all that stuff adds up. You know, so instead of just doing your normal damage, you're getting plus, plus whatever from, <laughs> plus whatever from Vengeance plus 50 from Corrupted Power, plus 80 from Poison, and then plus 80 from, excuse me, plus 40 from Electrified. So it's a great way to ramp up damage, especially with that specific build. But again, I don't love the move set of it, so I don't take it all the time. Um, I'm gonna put this in here, because yeah, I will take it sometimes. Especially, again, if I'm in that spot where I'm starting to gear a build and maybe I already have face flask and vengeance set up and I'm kind of doing that sort of vibe and this pops out of a chest I'll grab it but it's not something I will gravitate to which is interesting because I just talked about making a build <laughs> around this but I will generally already have a build that I will take this and put it in so that's that um let's go to the bank so uh let's do the next two bank let's do the bank weapons together so these are these are interesting so the first up is the dagger of profit this is a little guy that you can do crits with if you get gold within three seconds and there's gold everywhere so enemies all enemies drop gold every time you recycle an item you'll get gold every time you find a secret in the wall, regardless of whether it's food you recycle or actual money, you have the potential of getting gold. So the crits are generally not too hard to come by. The problem with this weapon is the damage is just okay and it's short. That said, I do like it. I like it a lot. So I will take this thing sometimes. Again, it's not, there's not a ton to talk about here, um, but it's cool. I, I like the fact that, you know, with every sort of update or DLC or whatever it is, there's like a vibe. And of course, <laughs> of course the bank has a vibe of money and they took that and made the vibe apply to this weapon in an interesting way. However, the gold digger is another item that came from the bank and this crits, it's a survival weapon. It crits on every hit as long as you have 12,000 or more gold. And I think it also gives you gold afterwards, I want to say. I feel like when I use this, I have so many, <laughs> I, got, I have so much gold, I don't even know how much gold it gives you. Um, yeah, there we go. So if you have the, if you have less than 12,000 gold, every hit gives you 10 gold. And then if you have the more than, boop, if you have more than 12,000 gold, it gives you 15 gold per hit. I love this thing. I use this thing all the time. In, in my opinion, it's, it is a very strong survival weapon. The crit condition is great. It does big damage. Um, the third hit is a big ground slam that kind of like does a big shockwave, um, sort of like how uh, the elite gold gorgers will do that. Like they'll slam the ground and have the shockwave. I think it's great. I use this thing all the time, all the time, all the time. Unapologetically, I will grab this if... <laughs> I grab it on like, I'm not kidding, like maybe like half or a little less than half of all my survival runs. I love it. What's interesting though is the two items that I just talked about. So we have our Dagger Prophet and our Gold Digger. There's a cool synergy that you can get here. So if you have the Gold Digger in your backpack, and now you can do this off color, right? Because any hit from the Gold Digger will generate that um, will generate the 10 or 15 gold. If you have it in your backpack, even if you're running Brutality and you put a survival weapon in your backpack, when you roll through an enemy to hit it, you will get gold. Which means that every time you roll through an enemy and proc Gold Digger in the Porky Pack, Dagger of Profits, Crit Condition, will be live. So if you're struggling to kind of get things moving and you do want to try the dagger of profit um i think it's a really interesting idea to pop the gold digger in the backpack get the extra gold guaranteed every roll which will have the crits pop up off here even more so but again two two really cool cool weapons uh but gold digger is is one of my favorites for sure 
How about Flawless? So Flawless is a rare drop from the Slammers, those big blue bird enemies that you'll see in the Corrupted Prison and in the Cavern, as well as another biome I'm not going to discuss. I like this weapon a lot. So it's brutality and survival scaling, and it's super interesting because it's... There's not a lot of slow brutality weapons anymore. So, quick history lesson. So, uh, oops, oh, I gotta find flawless first. Here we go. So, back. I keep saying. I feel like I keep saying back in the day, like like an old dude. But back, several many, <laughs> a long time ago. Update 1.9 came. So again, this video is being recorded during the time of 3.4 clean cut. So. I think it was like mid mid 2020 or late 2020 an update called update of plenty came out and that revamped a lot of things that were happening in dead cells and one of the things that it changed is that it dead cells used to be built where there was like there was overlap between colors so i mentioned this a little bit earlier um when i was talking about the crowbar how there was used to be something called quote unquote melee tactics and you'll still see some remnants of it here and there um, again, like in, in the uh, machete and pistol is a weapon that's both brutality and uh, tactics. But back before the update of Plenty, there was more overlap. So, for example, there was an overlap between tactics and survival where some items were both survival and tactics that are now tactics only. So, Nerves of Steel, uh, Multiple Nox Bow, War Javelin... There was like those were all dual scaling so you could take those with the survival build so they kind of like trimmed out a lot of that stuff to then make the range stuff mostly tactics right they would make the heavy hitting stuff mostly survival they'd make the mid fast melee stuff mostly brutality flawless is one of those items that i'm actually surprised they did not remove the dual scaling from um, so other items that used to be dual scaling like this, like the Symmetrical Lance used to be part Brutality, um, Nutcracker, Seismic Strike, like it, it's wild. But this is one that they decided to keep as dual scaling. And I think it's really interesting because it does open up more doors than this just being another heavy hitting survival weapon. You can take this with combo. You can take this with, again, with initiative, which I know I've mentioned a bunch. Um, it's okay, <laughs> even though I keep talking about it. The, the damage from your initial first hit of the initiative mutation, it does drop off as the game goes on, but it's I still like it a lot, especially for items that are going to have that first kind of like big chunk of damage. I think this item's great. You can take it brutality with those things that I just mentioned. You can take it with combo. You can take it with melee to slow enemies down. Or you can take it with survival and you can grab uh, Berserker with it, right? You can grab Berserker to minimize your damage that you take with that mutation. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. And I really, really like the attack combo with this because it has a combination of, you know, kind of, I think that first hits like straight forward and then it kind of like swings up and it swings down. To me, this makes the giant killer mostly obsolete because it has a similar heavily heavy move set it does great damage as long as you haven't been taking damage yourself and the crits are great and it's so versatile so i dig this weapon a lot i will grab this almost all the time again i love it i think it's super cool and you know it's unfortunate that you do lose the crit for 15 whole seconds if you get tagged but in the grand scheme of things, this item is one of my faves. Dig it. Dig it a lot. All right. Next up, Assassin's Blade. There's, no, sorry. Assassin's Dagger. <laughs> so this is one of the first quote-unquote secret items you can get. So it's located in the, in the Promenade of the Condemned. Right as you enter the level, you can jump on the ledge above you, and there's a little secret area where the blueprint's tucked away. So this is one of the first secret items that you can pick up. Personally, I don't use this often. It's very limited use because it does critical conditions to the back of an enemy. So think of the opposite of the Vorpan. But the range is really small on it. It's like a little status, status stiletto kind of a thing. It's really short and the non-crit damage is negligible. And 
it's in my opinion it's just not worth the risk for me to take this do a little bit of damage and then you know try to get behind an enemy it works great with phaser so what you can do is with the phaser skill you can warp behind an enemy and then get the crit because it kind of stuns the enemy and all that but for me it's i don't necessarily want to gravitate towards items that need other items to be better so for me i don't take this often um and that's interesting too because sort of like what i said about spite sword you know i don't love the move set and it does require other conditions and items to be good uh quote unquote good but for me you know a lot of these things they just stand on their own right so you can see here like a lot of these things are stuff like i've like i've mentioned they're things i'll take sometimes they might be specific use cases or i might be like oh man i haven't used a bat in a while but this stuff here is mostly solid on its own um i dig it i think <laughs> i'm just gonna go in order here i've been trying to like spice things up a little bit but i'm just gonna make this easier for me and for everybody else just to start going down the line blood sword so blood sword is a incredibly common drop from the green zombie so you'll probably see this in probably in the prisoners quarters might be your first drop um i think it's fine it's good to be able to apply a lot of bleeding um in a short period of time if you pair it with something like the cleaver that does constant grinding constant bleeding i think it's super cool on its own the damage is fine you know there's no crits to it there's no 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 ding noises so uh my brain is not as inclined to use it <laughs> as much but I think it's solid, and yeah, I do take this sometimes. Um, there's not a ton to write home about it. Um, you know, the way that bleed works is you, every stack of bleed, once it builds up to five, there's a pop, and it does a bigger thing of damage. So it's sort of like a Bloodborne type thing, where the bleed, or Dark Souls, where the bleed will build up, and then it does a chunk. Blood Sword's good. I think that it needs other items for it to really reach its full potential. So if you take that with, like, Cleaver, and take it with knife dance or you know sinew slicer or something like that i think it's i think it has its uses and yeah i'll take it sometimes broadsword so broadsword for me is was the first survival weapon that i really leaned into um and again like i would mention with flawless this actually used to be brutality and survival but this was one of the first like really heavy items that i used back in the day and it kind of taught me how to play more strategically and more slowly with survival it's a one trick pony right meaning that it doesn't do a lot it does one thing and it does it really well and what that is is that it does slow swings it gets crits on the second and third hits it's straight down the middle right you're not going to find anything wild with this um, one of the things that's awesome about this is that you can actually roll between the <laughs> between the hits so you can like have that first swing roll have the second swing do some crits roll again do the third swing so i'll do this a lot with elites where i will hit the elite roll through it get a second hit on its back and then as it turns roll through it and get the third hit again in the back i think it's cool i think it's a super cool item um again it's really you know it's it's really nice to see that even with all of this new quote unquote new stuff that evil tw evil empire has put out with weapons that just change the the flow of the game and all of this stuff it's really awesome to see something so old school and in my opinion it just still works it's just still such a cool item the other benefit is that those second and third swings the second swing kind of goes up and then the third swing kind of comes down so think of it sort of like a like a half moon or like a quarter moon shape where it's swinging up like a golf club and then swinging down like a big hammer it has a wider hitbox so you can hit enemies like bats and other things that are outside of that horizontal plane of play i like it i like it a lot i will take this often um again i i preferential to it because of my history with it but again it's just like a straight up good solid item you know it reminds me of like a dark souls <laughs> heavy item where you swing it a few times then you get a roll out of the way i think it's great shovel shovel is shovel is something that in my opinion needs a little bit more in its current iteration 
I don't think they've actually done a lot with Shovel over the years. Um, let's see. Shovel. Yeah, so they haven't done a lot with this as far as I know. So, yep, you can see. So all so it got buffed a little bit back in 2.4. Unlock cost got dropped, but in general, this item has been the same since it was introduced back in 0. Point whatever. I don't care for this too much, and part of it is because it just doesn't it doesn't really deliver on either side of it based on the colors that it scales with. So it scales with both Brutality and Survival. I feel like it's not fast enough for it to really benefit from a lot of Brutality's mutations and sort of playstyle, and it doesn't have any crit conditions, so it's, you know, it just kind of hits stuff. But then it's not really, like, heavy or doesn't do enough significant damage to really be on the Survival side. So I feel like this is just like just as it is in the icon here it's kind of like in the middle of two styles but it doesn't really excel at either one of the cool things that this does do is that it knocks back bombs so you can use it to swing you know i think it's like the every swing will knock back bombs so like i mentioned earlier with the oh my god what was it the hayabusa boots you can knock bombs out of the way if they're dropped by the the uh what do you call them the worms in the sewers or hand of the king or whatever this does this automatically with every shot but like i feel like it's not it's not enough so i am gonna put this in the rarely section i again i think it's just something that is cool the noise it makes is really cool it's got like an interesting literal <laughs> shovel hit noise i just don't take it as often um just because i feel like again it's right in the middle it does it does two things not as well as it could have done one thing so it's not one of my faves Seda stiletto um this is another item like the assassin's dagger that's pretty small the range that it has is really short it does criticals on targets that are bleeding or and or poisons so you can get some crits pretty quickly personally again this is another item um kind of like the what did i mention yeah like the assassin's dagger that needs another item in order for it to really succeed right so you need an affix off of an eye off of a skill that will generate bleed or poison you need open wounds you need you know corrosive cloud whatever it is in order for this to be really good personally i don't use it that often um there are situations where i will see that it might have an extra plus 80 to poison and i have the um the diverse deck i forget what the name of the card is but i have like the poison is it catalyst uh you have the poison card so that way every hit does poison so i'll pair that with open wounds and i'll take it into a boss fight and just get a bunch of crits and you know maybe take knife dance and use instinct of the master of arms to get the crit the the cooldown on the knife dance so that way there's always you know there's always some kind of status I might take it in that situation, but again, it's not something I, I lean towards. It's more like if I have the build sort of in place, like if I'm already in like a good spot and I see that I can put this in the build, I might make a couple of changes, but I'm not going to go out of my way for it. Again, I think it's a little, a little too dependent on other items and the damage is not as big as I would want it to be if it's dependent on those other things. So I don't take this often. Seismic Strike. So this is dropped by, I think they're called bombers. They're like the seagulls, <laughs> the seagulls with the goggles on them. Uh, this is an interesting item because what it does is it will root, um, it will root items. So it kind of like has a, I should have searched for seismic instead of strike. Here we go. It does a heavy hit and it will shoot like a shock wave in front of it that will root enemies. So it's interesting. I think, you know, this is another item that doesn't have a crit condition. Um, the damage on it is decent, but I feel like it's more of a supplemental weapon than a primary because there are some enemies that can't be rooted. You know, take this into the scarecrow fight and he'll he'll run you over. But it is cool because it does provide that root. Um, you know, one of the things that you can do with the seismic strike is you can pop it in the backpack and then take it with something like maw of the deep the shark that crits on rooted enemies you can take it with nutcracker you can take it with 
uh, baseball bat, right? There's a bunch of things you can take it with. So for me, this is more of a secondary item than a primary because it's function is cool, but it's not something that I use to carry me through the game that often. But there are situations where I will take it. And for me, I'm going to pop this into the sometimes. SP. There we go. Put it in sometimes because, again, there are instances where I'm like, oh, that'd be really cool. Or maybe I have, I don't know, I got it like maybe it pops out of a chest and I'm off color. You know, it pops out of a curse chest and I got to run where root would be really cool on like a tactics thing. And I might pop it in the backpack or pop it in my secondary slot or something like that. So I'll take it sometimes. War Spear is next up. So this is cool. So War Spear does crits on if it hits more than one enemy at a time. So think of the prisoner's quarters. Think of, um, or I should say the prisoner's quarters on like, I think it's one BC or higher, but like think of the toxic sewers. Think of, I don't know, like the infested shipwreck. Think of graveyard is another great one where there's a lot of smaller enemies that are on the ground that you can hit and kill in one shot this thing great for clearing out biomes i think it's really cool um again this is another item that doesn't do well in boss fights because there's you know there's no real way to get to hit two enemies at once in a boss fight um but i do i, I do enjoy it for clearing up biomes so for me i do take it sometimes but again that's more of like a you know it might i might grab it in a 60 door before the graveyard and be like oh this is going to be sweet and i'll pop it and i'll use it and then i find something else and i'll take the next <laughs> i'll take that uh, that weapon into the next biome instead of keeping the war spear but i do use it sometimes i think it's cool all right next up is the impaler this is dropped by the concierge uh i forget i should probably look this up i think it might be like it's fourth fourth or fifth kill maybe where are we here? Impaler. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Drops from the concierge. Yep. So it drops from the concierge on the fourth kill. And if an enemy's up against a wall, it will do a critical hit. The other cool thing is that it will also push enemies back a little bit when you hit them. So what you can do, uh, oh, here we go. It even says here, you can pair this with like the melee mutation to slow enemies, hit them a few times so that way they get pushed back towards the wall and then you can get those crit conditions. You can get crits on Mama Tick with this because she's up against the wall. Um, you know, you can kind of get some crits on maybe Concierge or Timekeeper if they're pinned up against the wall, but this is another melee weapon that does struggle a bit in boss fights. But that said, it's really cool. It's a cool item to take. I enjoy it. Um, you know, it's sort of like I, I kind of put the just based on move set, I put Impaler and War Spear kind of like in the same bubble. And again, I'm going to I'm going to rank not rank this. I'm going to place this in a similar section because I will take it sometimes. I think it's pretty sweet. Next up is the Rapier. So this is an item that will do crits either after a parry or after a roll. This thing stings. I think it's fantastic. It's it's really strong. Um, it does great damage from those crits and the crits are really easy to get. So, you know, even if you're not parrying, you're gonna be rolling a lot to avoid damage. So this is something you know, it's almost like the opposite of what I said with the broadsword, where you can like roll through an enemy, like an elite, roll through it, get some damage, roll through it again, get some damage on the other side. So you can constantly get crits with this thing. It's great with instinct. It's great with melee. Um, if it has extra damage to bleed, you pop open wounds on it, you get extra bleed damage. I think it's really great. Um, I will usually take this if I see it. Again, this is, and it drops from, um, it's a rare drop from the scorpions in the sewers. So you might be lucky and get it early on, but I think it's super cool. I think it's a great item. Um, again, crit conditions are, are really, really easy to get with this. So I will take it a lot. All right. How are we doing here? <laughs> how many more of these do we have to go through? Hold on. 10, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Oh my god, there's still so many. There's so many items in this game. This is crazy. Alright, next up is the Meat Skewer. So, 
This item can be found after the 10th successful win in a daily challenge. So you have to do the daily challenge on 10 days. So this one, <laughs> this is the item that takes literally takes the longest to unlock if you're talking about a chronological time frame. I think it's cool. So what the meat skewer does is it will it will go through an enemy and then it will allow you to do crits behind it. So it's super interesting. So this is one of the I feel like this is one of the first movement based items that came into the game. So there's a bunch of stuff now like the bladed Tonfus and the um, King Scepter that have movement built into the item's attack. But this was the first item that actually did that. This was back in whatever, I think it was 1.1 where it was patched and viable. I think it's super cool. I think it's really cool. Um, it's like a nice, I also use this in conjunction with the assault shield to move fast. So I'll do the assault shield dash, double jump, use a meat skewer, use the assault shield. You can zip around levels, uh, but the damage is really good. It's a little tricky because sometimes, you know, I will take this into the giant fight and I will just launch myself into the lava. <laughs> you know, I'll just go, I'll just drop myself into the lava by accident. Um, but I really, really like this item. I think it's cool. Again, I know I've mentioned melee a bunch. Melee is just a fantastic mutation. But if you take this with melee, that first hit will slow the enemy. So as you go through it and you come back for the other hits, it's going to be slower to react. So you have a little bit more time. But even on its own without mutations, um, I think this item is really, really interesting. I think it's super unique and I enjoy it a lot. So I take it usually. Next up is one of the OGs, the Nutcracker. So Nutcracker crits on enemies that are frozen, rooted, or stunned. It's a very heavy, slow weapon. Pairs great with Frost Blast, uh, Wolf Trap, Stun Grenade, you know, anything. Like I mentioned, I think I might have mentioned earlier. Seismic Strike in the backpack, you roll through it, get a crit with the Nutcracker. I think it's, I think it's interesting. Um, again, I, I feel like this is an item that's catered towards early players because it's so easy to get the synergies going again you take it take frost blast take the nutcracker take ice grenade and take wolf trap all four of those items are unlocked by default you don't they're they're just in the game as soon as you start it so you don't have to find blueprints you don't have to spend cells you can just grab them and run with it me personally i don't use a nutcracker that often and that's not a reflection on how good it is or how good it isn't, quote unquote. But for me, it's something that I've used so much in the past that I just don't gravitate towards it. You know, like if I'm doing survival, if it, if, I, if I'm in a shop and I see Flawless, Gold Digger, and Nutcracker, I'm not gonna take the Nutcracker. And again, that's just my own personal preference. But again, as an item, early game, literally early game as in <laughs> you've just got dead cells like yesterday and you're trying to figure some stuff out i think it's awesome i think it's a great item to use um again like i said earlier in my notes um you know this is not definitive this is only ranked by how often i use it not if something is quote unquote good or not um so there's a lot of utility here but personally i just don't use it too often spike boots so spike boots are dropped by the thorny enemy and what they do is they do a critical attack if you are interrupting an enemy's attack so the easiest way to explain this is if you think of an inquisitor when it kind of makes its uh, noise and puts its hand up before it casts a spell that signals that it's doing an attack so at before the spell comes out you can get critical hits on it anything with a wind up um you know any sort of just any enemy attack this will do a crit this is similar to me in i put it in like the same category as the spite sword because the move set changed i think it might have been again it might have been 1.9 2.0 or something but it, this used to just be like straight up kicks kind of like the hayabusa boots like whatever but they changed it so that the third hit is now almost like a it almost looks like an uppercut. Like if you've ever played Street Fighter and you've done like a Ryu or Ken like Dragon Punch, it kind of looks like that except it's a kick. And I don't love that because each kick kind of moves you forward and then that third kick puts you in a position where you're higher up in the air and it almost like interrupts the flow for me. So for me, this is something that was a good idea and like used to be really cool, but personally, I don't take it 
that often. Um, I'm actually going to put this in the rarely section for that reason. It's just not something I gravitate towards. Um, and again, this might just me being an old man who's been playing for a long time, but after they changed that move set for me, it just hasn't, hasn't done the, hasn't done the trick. All right, next up we have the Hayabusa Gauntlets. So this item is super interesting because it will do crits on enemies that are at, I think it's 40% health or lower. Uh, yep, that's exactly it. So if an enemy has 40% or less health, it will do crits. Every single hit will be a crit, as you can see. It's got like a six hit combo. But if the enemy does not have <laughs> less than 40% health, the damage is, is just okay. Um, this is another faster brutality weapon that would do well with melee, uh, the melee mutation, so that way you can slow enemy down, enemies down before they get to that 40% health threshold. Um, yeah, it's good. I will, again, I will take this in certain situations. Um, I do like taking this as a secondary, so let's say that I have I don't know, like let's say I have, I'm running Brutality and I have Flawless in my main hand and I have Assault Shield in my secondary and I have an empty backpack. I might take this into a boss fight, put the Assault Shield in my backpack, use Flawless to get the enemy health down, like a boss health down, and then just shred with the gauntlets. So it's cool, it has its limited uses. I do enjoy it and I do take it sometimes. All right. How's ever, how is everybody doing? How are you doing? I have no idea how long we've been recording. <laughs> I still have so many items to go through. Hopefully this is helpful. I'm just going to stop for a second. Hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully this is interesting. You know, maybe this will give folks a new perspective on certain items. Maybe this will make people go in the comments and be like, bro, there is no way the bone should be used that infrequently use it more you know and like i said at the beginning of the video maybe this is going to give me a chance to also review and look at items that i do need to check out again or items that i need to give a fair shake to you know but hopefully you're doing well hopefully this is helpful hopefully this is not just info dump <laughs> where i'm just saying facts and spouting information for way too long that might be overwhelming um, you know, obviously, quick side note, I'm going to the wiki here. Everything I'm mentioning is, as far as mechanics and stuff, are in the wiki. You know, the gear page has everything on it. It tells you the colors. It tells you what the damage is, um, you know, how to get it. So if there's anything that I'm saying here that's too fast or, you know, stuff that you want to go back to, definitely go to the Dead Cells wiki. Um, I'll put a link in the description, but it's deadcells.wiki.gg. And check out some more information for yourself, right? Um, as I've said in most, all of my tutorial videos, you know, this is just my subjective opinion on certain things. It might be helpful, it might not, you know, uh, but if there's other stuff that you wanna dig into that I might have lit a fire under, check out the wiki. Or, you know, maybe just pop the item in your main slot for a custom run and give it a shot, you know? You might be looking at this and say, man, like, I haven't really used the Swift Sword. Let me, let me check it out. Let me, let me do that velocity predator initiative build and see how it goes, you know? So what do we got? We're about halfway, maybe a little more than halfway. So, but I also like, I keep saying I want to speed things up, but like, I don't want to, I don't want to give items less than their due, what they're, what the respect that they deserve, right? So just because an item's lower on the list here, I don't want to rush through Alucard sword, you know? I don't want to rush. Well, I probably will rush through <laughs> flashing fans, but you know. So, all right. So let's do let's do a couple whips. So, uh, Valmont's whip. So this is interesting because this uh, this is also a dual scaling item. I just scrolled right by it. This is brutality and tactics. And the gimmick of this weapon is if you hit enemies with the tip of the whip, it will do a critical hit. So. Personally, this is one of the few items that are tactics melee that I think you should take with tactics. And the reason for that is that coincidentally, quote unquote, coincidentally, the distance between you and the tip of the whip where the crit hits is big enough to trigger the tranquility mutation. So if you take tranquility and you use Helmont's whip, you're not only going to get the crit, from that distance as long as there's no enemies between you and that the 
critical point, but you're also going to get an extra damage boost from the Tranquility Mutation. So personally, I will take this on Tactics. I don't generally take it with Brutality unless I'm just kind of fooling around on a lower BC and I want to just do a crazy Predator run or something like that. But I think this is a great Tactics melee item again. As you likely know, Tactics is generally ranged. The HP is really low, uh, but for me, the risk reward is worth it. Um, you know, if you take this with support and then you drop a trap behind you and you have an enemy in front of you with Tranquility, like you're doing a, a pretty decent chunk. It is a little tricky to, to kind of maneuver the whip to get the critical point, you know, so like for the giant, if the eyeball comes out, you're going to be more towards like the side of the platform, almost like rolling into the lava to try to get the crit. But I think that's for me, that's minimum. So I like this item a lot. Um, you know, I I'm going to say I'm going to put this in sometimes. And the only reason I'm putting this in sometimes instead of up here and usually is because I do run it with tactics melee. It's not something I do a lot, but when I do it, I really enjoy it. So that's that's where I'm going to pop that. Wrenching Whip. So this is similar to, I guess, similar to like a Twin Daggers kind of a thing where it's a three hit attack. So the first two hits are just regular whip hits. The third attack will pull an enemy in and will uh, do a crit on the kick. Um, so at least, <laughs> at least I think that, yeah, there you go. It's exactly what it does. I think this is cool. This is this is an item that unfortunately just gets lost, right? There's some items in Dead Cells, maybe like, you know, like the Twin Daggers or I don't know, like the Torch that just kind of get lost in the in the midst of things because there are so many good items. There are so many good items, not just <laughs> not just in melee, but in general, like this, this game is stacked with good stuff. So Wrenching Whip for me just gets lost. So I'm going to put this in the not often category. And the reason I'm putting it there is because, like I said earlier, I'm going to review this later and spend more time with some of this other stuff. Wrenching Whip's good. It's cool. If you see it, it's worth a shot. You can always get the crit. It's a whip. I think it, does it ignore shields? It does. It ignores shields. So that's great for like shield bearers and stuff like that. So it's cool give it a shot. So I'm putting it here and not often. Again, for me, my goal is to use it more so I can pop it up here in the sometimes. But just to be completely honest and transparent, I don't use it that often, but it's only because it gets lost. Oiled sword. I use it sometimes. I don't need to quantify it. I do use it sometimes. If I have a fire grenade, flamethrower turret, maybe I want to dual bind with... Um, fire brands and I might take off color kill rhythm to get the fire crit fire condition I'll take oiled sword um I don't love it I don't hate it it's just one of those things that I feel like if I see it and I do have the option to create the crit conditions I'll grab it I think it's cool especially against bosses so because you know if you have the flamethrower turret which I think has like a 12 second cooldown or something or you have a skill that burns the ground when you use it so like maybe face flask does that or corrupted power or something you can get a lot of crits pretty quickly um i think it's good i think it's fun um i feel like it's again it's it's one of those middle of the road items that's just been around forever and it's funny too so back i, I forget what i forget what update it was that introduced the actual crit condition but it used to be all it used to do was cover an enemy in oil it used to be like the most useless uh oh it doesn't say Maybe it was 2.4. No, it wasn't. This is interesting. So there's another update sometime between early access and 1.8 where it did start to do crits. But back in the day, all it did was spread oil on the enemy. It was not well utilized. Um, but now it's cool because it kind of combos that oil, oil and burning. Um, you can get extra, since it's not qualified as a burning enemy, um, you can get a uh, balance, uh, not a balance, <laughs> get a bonus to burning, uh, get 100% to burning oil, which is ridiculous. So again, certain situations, I'll grab this. Um, I think it's cool. I think it's cool. I'll take it sometimes. On the exact opposite side of that, as we're going through a decent chunk of items, again, that just kind of get lost 
along the way. Um, the torch. So torch is good. It does decent DPS. No crit condition, but it sets enemies on fire uh, with every swing. I like it. I like it a lot, and you know what? I take it sometimes. I don't have a lot to say about this just because it's just like... It's very straightforward. You know, this is something else you can pop in the backpack. So, hey, back to Oiled Sword, right? Maybe you pop the torch in your backpack. Use Porky Pack, so that way whenever you roll through an enemy, they get set on fire. And then you can get the crits from the Oiled Sword. So, it has its uses. I like it a lot. But again, it's just so, so straight and narrow, especially compared to some of these other items that have such interesting mechanics to them. That, you know, it does get lost, but I like it. I think you should try it if you haven't tried it yet. Frantic Sword. So Frantic Sword does criticals if you have uh, either less than half of your health or if you have more than half malaise. So if you are not playing on 5EC, you likely haven't encountered malaise, which is a game mechanic that is part of 5EC. I won't talk about it too much. Um, I'll let you folks kind of figure that out as you go but basically um for <laughs> to put it generally um there is an extra bar over the player's health that will change over time and if you have more than half of that filled this will do critical damage and if you have less than 50 percent health it will do critical damage this is another i feel like this this whole section this is so interesting this whole section is just stuff that i personally feel will get lost so I don't use the Frantic Sword that often because if I'm playing on 5BC, I generally will have my malaise lower than half. And if I'm playing normally or if I'm just, you know, running around killing enemies as one does in Dead Cells, like my health is usually not super low. I don't take this often. And again, this is not a reflection on how good of an item it is. It's just for me, I find myself in situations where I don't gravitate towards it. But that said, if I am super low on health and I'm going into a boss or, you know, I'm going into whatever level trying to find some food and I know that I'm going to be low on health for a little bit, I might take it. I might take it because it does some decent crits um, and, it's, and it's cool. But again, it's just something that I feel like gets lost. Next up is the Flint. So the Flint is the first, most likely will be the first boss item that you see. So I think it was version 1.4. It was called, I think it was called Who's the Boss, <laughs> I want to say. But basically there was an update where um, the every single boss in the game was given one of their items that drops. So the Flint, Tentacle. Are there any other items on this list that I can give real quick? I don't think so. Um, but basically what it is is that the first time you beat the Concierge, the Flint blueprint, blueprint will drop. And what this does is that you can swing it once it's like an overhead swing if you charge it and then let it go it does a critical hit and then spreads fire in a path very just like how the concierge does like he has that attack where he kind of like draws his arm back and then slams it down into the ground and does fire damage um i think this is great i will take this sometimes because i feel like it's a very strong item uh, again, it does get outclassed personally by some of the other survival stuff that I do prefer to take. But Flint's great. Flint's great. You know, you get it. You get it early on, and I think it's cool because it does kind of like pull players in a little bit to that sort of, oh, the boss did that. Now I can do that. I think it's cool. On the other side, we have Tentacle, which was dropped by Conjunctivius on the first kill. I know there's some tech with it. I know there's iframes. There are certain things that you can do. Um, personally, I just don't use it. Um, it's not necessarily a comment on how good or how bad it is. It's just not something I've I've really been able to jive with. Um, I think it's interesting that you know it will pull you towards enemies. You can use it to pull yourself towards walls. So there's actually been a couple of times where I've had it, and I've been falling towards a spike pit, and you can use it to like suck yourself over to a wall. Um, but Personally, I don't use it that much. Um, again, there's a lot of, or I've recently seen a lot of chatter about iframes and other kind of tech because I guess as you're, as you're using it and it kind of like sucks you forward, there's iframes. And I think there may also be iframes afterwards. So people have been using it as a secondary, but personally, I don't use it that often. All right, 
Next up, we have the Tombstone. So this item is really interesting. And personally, when I first saw this, I was like, oh man, this is a huge Hades ripoff because basically the Tombstone effect is very similar to the Doom effect in Hades. And what that is, is if you are you know, in Hades, you can, one of the modifiers is you can create what's Doom. And if you hit an enemy with an attack that has Doom, a little kind of like sword will show up over it and then after about a half a second it will do damage so it kind of like drops down and that's exactly what happens with the tombstone but what makes this so cool and so interesting is that when you use it so again this is another another heavy survival item uh, let me find it here survival item that has three you know it's a three attack thing um on the third hit so you have two swings that do heavy damage the third hit you jump up and you kind of slam the tombstone down and if you hit an enemy when you slam it what will happen is that all of the enemies nearby will get doomed so they'll have doom over their head they'll have an icon and it will cause a big big amount of damage and it's kind of cool too. It's a little visual clutter, but any enemy that's killed by the tombstone will actually have a tombstone <laughs> show up on the ground where it was. And this is great. This is great because if you can position yourself to have that third attack hit an enemy where there are other enemies nearby, um, again, think of a level like the graveyard or the sewers where there's a bunch of little, little enemies here and there. Um, if you can kill an enemy with that third hit, a lot of enemies on the screen will just clear. They'll just disappear. I think it's great. It's enemies, uh, this enemy, this this weapon's super cool. Um, I do use it when I see it. It's not great for bosses. Um, again, it's another weapon that doesn't really fare well for bosses, but for biomes, I think it's fantastic. Super cool. Next up is the King Scepter. So this is the Shovel Knight crossover. This was introduced in the most recent Everyone's Here update, and it's it's really interesting. I wonder if the wiki has the... Oops. I wonder if the wiki has the um, move set, because sometimes they'll have a... No, they don't. Sometimes there's like a little animation down here. So what it is is that if you've played Shovel Knight King of Cards, this may be familiar to you. You will charge forward and you hit a target, so you'll hit something, and then you bump up in the air and you start spinning. And then if you can land on an enemy, you'll do damage and you can then charge again. This is so tech heavy that it's really challenging to use effectively. I do like it. I do like it and I will take it sometimes to challenge myself. But the other side of this is I feel like the movement the movement could use a little bit of a, I don't know, I don't want to say a buff. Buff isn't the right word. It could use a little bit of tweaking where you maybe you don't go flying as far because what I'll find is I'll hit an enemy and I'll go up in the air and it's almost like I expect to be in a certain horizontal position, but I'm a little bit off. So I kind of have to go through and then like pull back if that makes sense. So instead of hitting the enemy and going right above it. It's like you go through it and then forward a bit. So there's a lot of movement that you kind of have to keep track of. Um, I know a lot of folks aren't crazy about this item, but personally, I do use it sometimes. And again, sometimes it's to kind of just like challenge myself to see how it is. Um, sometimes, <laughs> and this is probably for other folks in other uh, everyone is here items. Like sometimes I just, I'm just in like a shovel knight mood. And I just want to use the King Scepter and just bounce around the promenade and take a bunch of damage and just have some fun, right? Because at the end of the day, that's what we're doing, right? We're not playing Dead Cells, or most of us aren't playing Dead Cells to make a ton of money or compete or, you know, whatever. It's like games are supposed to be fun. And King Scepter, it's fun. Another heavy survival item. I'm not actually going to put the toothpick next to Um... Another heavy survival item. So the oven axe is, it's interesting. So a lot of survival items. So again, we talked a little bit about this with the broadsword. We just talked about it with the tombstone. Um, they'll have three hit combos. And this is another heavy item that has a three hit combo. 
where the third hit will do a big swing and does big criticals. And what you can do is you can chain criticals after that. So the way that I use this is, you know, I will swing it, try to hit an enemy, swing it again. And then there's a brief period of time between that, that when the third hit, the third hit gets that crit and you can trigger it again where you can roll, right? So you can hit the enemy with that third attack, roll, swing again, roll, swing again to kind of keep that critical going because the, I should probably talk about what the actual <laughs> crit condition is. The last combo does the critical hit and it's beefy. It's chunky. It's super chunky. So if you can get that third hit kind of like in a cycle where you hit an enemy, roll, hit, 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 you can keep swinging it from platform to platform. And again, this is, it's it's quite different than the King Scepter, like we just talked about, but this is another movement-based item where you do need to, you do have to like take into consideration where your character is going to go with the gimmick of the weapon, right? So where is it going with that? So for me, um, I do not use this that often. <clears throat> As I'm looking at it, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put it more up here. Um, I'm gonna put it in the sometimes because I definitely use this more often than these items, but I use it a little bit less than these. And I'm not <laughs> I'm not gonna create another tier list that, that just says of an axe that I can put it in there. Um, similarly, we have the toothpick. This is another super, super chunky survival item. And what this does is that it does pretty heavy damage just in general and then what you can do is you can charge it to get a critical attack and what that does is it will quote unquote break the toothpick and you'll see a little number here broken it does very little damage so you can see you know base damage 195 base combo 600 if it's broken you're going all the way down to 82 base 120 base so that's what like one fifth of the damage 20 percent damage but again it's only six seconds this is cool if you're looking to get like a giant chunk of damage. So I actually have a video early on before I started doing commentary where I think it's called like the best bonk that ever bonked or something. And it's a video of me in a spoiler level, which I did not mark as a spoiler in that video. I'm so sorry. I might, I'm going to change the description so it says spoiler. But anyways, there's a, a video of me hitting two slammers with a charged toothpick attack and it's incredibly it's really gratifying when you can actually do that in general like i do use this item sometimes um it's it's another kind of like case specific sort of thing um i don't love it early on i feel like you know earlier in the game when scroll counts are low and enemy health is relatively higher it's a little bit tougher because you do have to you know it might take two two normal swings to kill a regular enemy if you're not charging it um but I think it's cool. I think it's another cool item. Um, and again, like even just looking at what we have here now, um, we're almost through the base, the base game items here. There's a lot of variety, right? I mean, we talked about some items kind of getting lost in the mix, uh, but we also talked about items from other games, you know, um, and there's just a lot of, lot of variety. And I feel like the toothpick just adds to that. It's just like another, another thing that, that gives you a chance to try something new, right? Next up is the Hard Light Sword. So this is a crossover from uh, Hyper Light Drifter. And it's really interesting because... Uh, hard Light Sword. It's interesting because this is another, you know, brutality tactics item. Um, personally, I feel like it's worth... Ah, see, it's this is, this is tough because I feel like you can take this with tactics to get things like Point Blank or tranquility or you know other other tactics melee type mutations that will trigger from the shot that comes from the secondary shot here but in order to get the ammo for the gun you have to be up close and hit enemies with melee attacks which is kind of tough in tactics so this is it's it's interesting so i personally i do enjoy this a lot i take this with brutality and the way that it works is you have two slots so you have a gun and a sword and just like in hyper light drifter you can shoot the gun and the way that you get the ammo back is you will 
attack an enemy with the sword. So if you're, you run out of ammo, you can't shoot again until you hit something with the sword. So every hit with the sword, even if it doesn't kill an enemy, will give you more ammo back. The other thing is that the gun will put a mark over the enemy. So if you hit an enemy with a bullet, it puts this little mark on. I think it stacks up to maybe four, four or five. I can't, um, sorry, six marks. It stacks up to six, but that makes it for critical attacks with the melee. So what you can do is you can shoot, shoot a bunch of things into enemies, use the melee to get the crits and get your ammo back and kind of repeat that process. I like this item a lot. I enjoyed Hyperlight Drifter. I played it through. I think I played it through all the way once. Uh, yeah, I've, I've completed it once. I think it's really cool. It's a fun item. Um, it does take up two slots, so it does kind of limit. It, like it, it really exposes you as a player. Um, so it might be cool to like take another shield, uh, or I should say, take a shield, pop it in the backpack with armadillo pack, even if it's off color. If you're looking for a little bit of extra protection, um, but I like this a lot. The one piece of advice that I'm going to give folks, if you do play this or you do want to try it, is to switch the buttons when you get it. So I think when you when it first starts, the sword is on the left and the gun is on the right. I always switch it so that way the gun is in the primary spot and the sword is in the secondary spot. Personally, I feel like it it just feels better and I found it easier to use because I do, you know, you lean into the gun more or at least let me rephrase that. I'm sorry. I lean into the gun more. So the sword is more of the secondary to get those kind of extra crits, but I'm using the gun a lot to mark the enemies to then attack. So I switch the items. Um, if you want to give that a shot, if you haven't loved this item, if you haven't loved the hard light sword, it might be worth checking out. Switch them up. Um, I use this usually. I dig it. I dig it a lot. Where are we? Oh boy, we only have five more. Five more in the base game. We're doing it. We're making it. Next up is Star Fury. So this is a Terraria crossover. Came in the latest. Everyone is here update. Um, I like this a lot. So its initial release, when it first when it was first put in the game, it was not good. Straight up. Um, it's tactics and survival. And basically what it would do is you would... Um, let me see if I can find it here. Yeah, so what happens is you hit an enemy with a sword and it creates a falling star. And initially it only did one star and it would kind of like pop around. So if you hit an enemy, a star would come off and like hit an enemy away from that one. So let's say there's an elite right off to the side and you hit a normal enemy with your sword, that star would come down and like hit the elite and activate it. But they buffed it in, uh, what version was it? There we go, 3.3, so in the Return to Castlevania update. They buffed it so that way now it creates two stars. And for me, that turned this item from being okay to being something that I I love. I think it's fantastic. One of the benefits of doing this is that, you know, it is melee, uh, excuse me, it is brutality and tactics. You can take it either color. I personally like taking this with tactics because you can stack it with point blank. All of those stars that come down get the extra damage from being close um you know like rank close range attacks i think it's great it's awesome on bosses i really enjoy it in the biomes uh personally like it's it's really interesting because it's almost like i feel like it does better in biomes scaling with brutality but it does better on bosses scaling with tactics but whatever way you slice it this is a, a really interesting item that takes again it takes a really it takes something from another game and makes it super interesting in dead cells and i love it I think it's fantastic. I take this a lot. I think it's great. All right, four more. Next up is the Hattori's Katana. So this is dropped by the Weirded Warrior enemies. Those are the crab dudes or crab th folks <laughs> that are in like Ramparts and Stilt Village. Um, and this is cool because this is another item that an enemy uses that you can then use yourself. Similar to Tentacle, I know there's a lot of tech here as far as the way that it's used. You can charge it and do all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, I'm not here to necessarily talk about tech. Um, you know, this is more of just a discussion of items I use and, you know, a little bit of conversation about it. So I'm just going to use this as if I have no idea what the charging tech is because maybe you don't know what it is either. And that's totally cool. The way it works is that it has a four hit combo. 
and it does decent damage, but what you can do is if you charge the attack and you let it go, you'll kind of like fly across, halfway across the screen. You'll do critical damage to any enemies that are in the way, and then it's also really cool because when you do that, there's like these little flowers, like little uh, sakura, like little cherry blossoms that kind of like come out from the sword. But any enemies that are in the way will take critical damage. So it's really interesting because this will allow you to just kind of like swipe it, swipe at enemies, get some normal damage. But if you see a, a stack of enemies that are kind of there or you just want to do something cool, you can charge it and get crits. I think this item is super interesting. Um, I do take it a lot. So I'm going to pop it here in the usually. Next up are two items that came in from the clean cut update, version 3.4. So there's the sewing scissors and the giant comb. Now I'm going to put these two together because they're weird. They're super weird and I think they're interesting and I, I, I don't know, the, I see this and it's really interesting because the tailor has been in the game for 22 updates. He's been in there since version 1.2 when outfits were introduced and he's always had these big scissors and now here we are literally like what four years later and now you can use the scissors so i think it's really interesting how you can just how evil empire is just taking these things and popping them back in the item is a little strange though and i don't use it that often and the reason for it is because i feel like even though it has like a really big hitbox and even though it has like a cool animation when you do trigger the special effect that does insta kill enemies I don't f I just don't find myself using it that often because I feel like the situations where I do want to use the insta kill, if I'm not mistaken, it's the second hit. There's like a big overhead hit and then like a second chop hit. It's a little harder for me to position that. Um, but this thing does have a huge hitbox. It's great against smaller enemies. Like you can just shred through the prom with this thing and get rid of all the bats and everything. But personally, I just don't use it that often. But I think it's super cool. Giant comb is next, and <laughs> this may surprise some folks, but I take this sometimes. And the reason for it is because there's the crit condition for the giant comb is it will hit any enemy that is up in the air. Uh, so here we go. So there's a lot of enemies that are flying. So even if you may not think of them as flying, think of conjunctivious, think of death, think of the giant's hands and the giant's eyes it's interesting and i feel like this is a, again i think people might look at this and like i said a couple minutes ago it's like a weird item but i think it's worth a shot one of the coolest things that i've done with the giant comb is i'll pop it in the backpack with porky pack so that way whenever you roll through an enemy that's not super heavy or is not an elite they get popped up in the air I'll have pure knight as my main, so what I'll do is I'll roll through an enemy, it will fly up in the air, and then I can, from standing, hit up an attack and get a critical and bounce the enemy up top. It's super Devil May Cry. It's really interesting. Um, I feel like I've said that so many times. It's really interesting, really interesting. But legit, this item's really interesting. I think it's fantastic. And again, because it's such a specific thing and it's so niche and so weird, um, you know, I find myself leaning towards it a bit more than other folks might just because I think it's, I think it's super cool. And like, yeah, if this, if I'm going through the ancient sewers and this pops up in one of the locked doors before the conjunct fight and I have a, if I have a key, I might just grab it and just use it to get the crits. It's cool. And then finally, I don't even know. Oh my God. What's this called? The old sword? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the rusty sword is what it is the rusty sword so this is the default sword um you know you'll see this immediately when you first start playing and once you start unlocking other items it becomes obsolete just because it's basically a slower not crit condition balance blade um but one of the things that i do like about this and other folks might not realize is that the breach on this is ridiculous so if you start a new save file grab this grab the rusty sword and then just go up to an enemy and just attack it. It'll, I think it'll take maybe like four, four shots, four swings to kill an enemy. But what you'll see is the enemy will start to do an attack, but because of the breach, it will stop the enemy from doing the attack. So 
you can just kind of like just stand in front of a archer swing 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 it's gone it'll go to draw its art draw its bow back but it won't shoot because of the breach i rarely use this obviously because it's a beginner item but i think it's worth noting that it's got great breach so there we go all right so that is the first chunk we've made it through the main game all of the items that you see in front of you right now are items that you can get just by buying dead cells you do not need dlc you do not need to pay anything other than the initial cost of the software this is everything that would be available to you for melee items all right so here's the base game we're going to shoot through the dlcs now and i'm excited because we are getting close to the end <laughs> we only have what is this 12 uh, 16 items so from the bad seed dlc and what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the dlc items on the same row so that way before we start talking about it, if folks click on the timestamp, they can see what items I'm going to be going through. Flashing Fans is up first. So this is dropped by the Yeaters. Those are the big mushroom boys that chuck the little jerk shrooms around. And what it does is that it's got an interesting crit condition. So if you hit a projectile with the melee attack from the Flashing Fans, you'll do crits. I think it's for six. I want to say it's like six seconds. Um, but what you'll do is you'll do crits for a little bit. And what's interesting about that is that it's a difficult crit condition to put yourself in because it's almost like you're trying to parry with the melee item. Like you're trying to parry a projectile with it. But if you do get it, the crits are good. The crits are really good. And it's another item that's like, it's super case specific. And as you can probably tell, I'm struggling. I'm struggling to like <laughs> talk about like why it's great or why it's not great or whatever. I don't use it that often. I don't use that often. I, I, I think like, again, every once in a while it might pop up where I'll grab it um, or I might challenge myself to take it through, like say, take it through the cavern and try to parry all the arbiter beams so I can then get crits on other enemies. I don't use it that often. Um, what's interesting about it though is that from a inspirational standpoint i think that these were taken uh as inspiration from mortal kombat because katana and melina from i think it's like mortal kombat 2 and up their sisters that one is in blue and the other one's in kind of like a purpley red sort of thing um and they use fans as their item so uh i think it's kind of cool that they may have taken homage from mortal kombat but yeah i don't use it that often um that's it i wow i really struggle with that one I really struggle with that one. That's really interesting. And it's also really interesting too, because this is <laughs> uncut and single take with no script. So I can't go back and change that. Here I am, here we are. Next up is the Scythe Claws. So these are dropped by Mama Tick, first, first kill. And this is, su I, love, I love the Scythe Claws from a historical reason, because this was the first two-handed weapon that was introduced in the game. So the Bad Seed DLC came out. It was version 1.7. Um, I think it was like late, late 19, 2019 maybe, early 2020. Can't remember. Yeah, I think it was 2019. And this was the first item that came out where it required you to use two item slots at once. This opened the door for everything, right? This opened the door for <laughs> all the... Where are we? All the, the two-handed crossbows, it opened the door for the Ferryman's Lantern, it opened the door for Hard Light Sword, it opened the door for a lot of things. So I think from a historical perspective, this weapon is amazing. Um, it's fantastic. From a usage perspective, I use it sometimes. And for me, you really need to pair it with something like Kill Rhythm or, and or Berserker. Um, to kind of get the best benefit out of it because they're so slow. The attacks are really big. They're really slow. And unless you have something to either mitigate damage from incoming sources or speed the process up, it's a little tricky to use. But I'll take it sometimes. I think it's pretty sweet. Last one. Rhythm and Bazooki. So this is dropped by the Elite Ticks. I think it's, yeah, it's a rare drop. So it's got a 0.4% drop. 
survival only item and uh the way that this works is it will <sighs> the first two swings are you basically just smashing a guitar so like <laughs> who was it pete townsend from the who i think or whoever like you're smashing a guitar over your head but what happens is if you hit the third hit it will do a critical aoe kind of like a little bubble around you and you can repeat that so i've seen people say that if you listen to the acdc song back in black just the the way that the tempo is that's the rhythm of the bazooki so what you can do is you can kind of get in that zone use the two its first two attacks slam the third and then continually press on that rhythm rhythm and it will repeatedly do aoe criticals it's tricky to use i'm not gonna lie i feel like the the frame window for that timing is very small um but if you can get in the rhythm oh jesus <laughs> if you can get in the rhythm it's cool uh, this item is great for fighting the giant because the arc of the AOE criticals will hit the eye, it'll hit the hands. Super interesting. Um, yeah, so I do use this sometimes. Where are we? R. There we go. So I use it sometimes. I feel like, again, the, the, the crit window is a little bit small, so I feel like if I can't get into that groove, I get a little bit discouraged, but that's on me. <laughs> That's on me as a player, that's not on the item itself. So um, yeah, I think it's cool. Sometimes I use it. All right, next up we have the Fatal Falls DLC. These items are all completely different. They're all super interesting. Um, and they're all <laughs> behind a paywall. So Snake Fangs. Snake Fangs is really cool so what it does is it will teleport you to an enemy and then after i think five hits it does poison let's see poison victims oh, i'm sorry it does poison off the bat but it does critical hits if the if the enemy has a bunch of poison marks so Pairing this again with something like Catalyst that can do poison damage from the diverse deck, every melee item. If you have something that can proc extra poison, that makes this super helpful. Um, I like this item a lot. I think it's great because it inflicts poison. Um, when you finally do get those crits, it feels good. And just like so many brutality items, if you pair it with melee, you can use those small, quick attacks to slow an enemy down as the poison stacks. I think this thing's great. I use it a lot. I think it's, whoop, <laughs> that's my audio, sorry. Um, I use it a lot and I I, I think it's fantastic. Um, I'm gonna pop it up here. Make things, there we go. I have a video, I don't, I haven't put it up. I might, I might splice it into another one of my, one of my actual videos down the line, but I have some footage of me fighting conjunct with the snake fangs and it just like zips, it zips everywhere. It's so funny, I love it. Iron Staff, next up. So, I don't use this that often, and it just doesn't feel rewarding. So the way that it works is it's a, it's a melee item that almost acts like a shield. So basically, if you, an enemy is coming in with a melee attack, you can use the first attack on this item to parry that, and then the next two attacks will do critical hits. So this reminds me a lot of the Alucard's shield from return to castlevania it's basically the same thing except instead of being a shield this is a weapon so you can still swing it and get some all right damage on it it doesn't feel good to me to use because it takes so much time and positioning to get that parrying done that i would rather just parry right i'd rather have something again have one of the old faithfuls have have flawless in my main and have whatever punishment or something or cudgel in my my secondary parry with the shield and then get an attack in so for me it just doesn't feel great um, other folks might find that it works really well got some interesting utility but it does slow things down even more than survival is already slow so i don't take it too often ferryman's lantern another two-handed item that um again that the scythe claws paved the way for this is uh this is super interesting um it's another item that I am describing as interesting. I, I, I say that all the time, but I guess that just goes to show how fascinated, 
fascinated I am by some of this stuff and how freaking cool it is, right? So the Ferryman's Lantern is interesting. So it does have a, some overlap, some parallel with the Hardlight Sword. So because it kind of has that like melee ranged combo kind of thing. So what you do is if you kill an enemy, you gather its soul. And what that means is you'll see like a little circle kind of like floating around your character. And what you can do is then you can use the soul shot, which is the second slot to shoot souls as a projectile. So what you're doing is you're getting in there with these really heavy, heavy melee swings, getting the souls. And then what you can do is you can hold the second shot to charge them and then shoot them out and do critical hits. The crits do a lot of damage. You can often kill an elite with four, maybe three or four of these things, just charge them and shoot them. I think it's great. It's really weird that it's brutality and tactics. I, I feel like this should be tactics and survival just based on how slow the attack is, but that's just, you know, personal, my personal opinion. Um, but even as a brutality, tactics weapon um i think it's dope i use it a lot i think it's fantastic um yeah and it's a rare drop from the apostates in the uh what's the name of that level i already forgot it second level in the fatal falls it's great all right next up is queen in the sea dlc as you can probably tell <laughs> starting to get a little fatigued um i've never I've never done this. I've never talked this long without a break. So interesting. It'll be interesting to go back and watch this and be like, man, have someone, someone be like, oh, I really want to hear about that, those fatal fall weapons. And then they're like, this dude is just rambling. <laughs> He's rambling. So, all right, next up, Queen in the Sea DLC. So this is the Abyssal Trident. Um, I mentioned this earlier when I was talking about the bone. Um, and what it does is like, it has a first swing that is like an overhead swing, and then it charges you with the trident ahead of you, and it does a lot of really quick criticals. So again, thinking of something like the Panchaku or the or the Bone, where you're getting like a lot of crits pretty quick. It's really challenging to use because I feel like the crits just don't do enough. There's like I feel like the crits don't do enough damage, and there's not enough breach on this item to get an enemy from to stop an enemy from hitting you. I don't love it personally. Um, I do not use it that often. Um, if you pair it with something like Catalyst or Instinct, um, it can do a little bit of extra damage. You know, open wounds, actually it's great with open wounds because you can get those bleed stacks pretty quick, relatively quick, but personally, I don't use it that much. Next up, hand hook. If anybody has watched my other videos, you'll see that hand hook has had a bit of a redemption arc. This item will has a two hit attack the second attack will grab an enemy and throw it behind you in which point it will either do crits if it hits a wall or it hits another enemy similar to the katana and the tentacle there's some tech here where biters actually count as enemies so if you have biters behind you you can use the hand hook to throw an enemy into the biters and it will do crits i don't do that because I don't care for biters. I feel like it, it messes up the rhythm of my gameplay. Um, so I will just take hand hook and use it on its own. Um, I've had a really interesting time with this because when I wrote my tutorial video, I made a joke about how unlocking hand hook is more important than unlocking outfits. But I've started to use it. I've started to main it. it even though it doesn't do a ton of damage, I think it's fun. Uh, I think it's really interesting to kind of see how you can toss enemies around into other enemies and into walls. Um, my one piece of criticism, I guess, is that it would be nice if the enemies that were getting hit. So if you toss an enemy behind you and it hits a second enemy, it'd be nice if that second enemy took more damage from the first, which it doesn't. But that's just like a minor squabble. Um, I take this a lot. I'm not going to lie. I take it a lot. And this is a recent thing that I've taken a lot, again, since my... Uh, beginner's guide. I've been giving it more of a fair shake and I've really been enjoying it. Bladed Tonfas. So this item is one of the uh, one of the items that's dropped from the servants. So if you kill, I think it's Cleo, that's how you pronounce it. Um, if you kill the enemy, the third servant that uses this, if you kill her first in the final fight, this is the blueprint that will drop. 
I'm sorry. If you kill her, is it last? Yeah, I'm sorry. If you kill Cleo last, this blueprint will drop. So what you need to do is you have to kill the other two, Uturp and uh, Calliope. Calliope. Kill them first. So kill a Wrecking Ball Servant. Kill the Archer Servant. And then what will be left will be Cleo. And she will drop this when you kill her. Super interesting item. This kind of like falls into the same category as the King Scepter for me, where it is movement based. So the first attack, you kind of like lunge forward. It clears maybe, I don't know, a quarter of the screen, 20% of the screen, something like that. If you hit an enemy, the next four attacks or the next three attacks will do crits. It's really cool. And what's interesting is you can use that first attack to like go through an enemy but then as you're in the air, so let's say, let's say the enemy's on the right. When you attack, you're going to jump over, you're going to jump over to the right. And what will happen is that you can then face the other direction. So that way your attack will land on the left. So it kind of like closes that window a little bit. Once I figured that out, I realized how interesting and how cool of a, of an item this is because I had better, better movement, better technique with it. If you check that out, I do recommend trying that. Again, use that first attack and then whatever direction that you're going without pressing another button, just face the opposite direction to get that hit to crit and then the next few hits are good. I use this thing a lot. I use this very often. Again, I, I feel like there's also a, a theme here as far as movement-based items um, to like kind of challenge myself to do things a little bit differently. Um, but yeah, I use it. I use it a lot. I think it's really cool. Mav the Deep. So this is a another three hit heavy survival weapon. The third hit will root. I think it roots and it causes bleeding, right? Yep, that's exactly it. So it will root an enemy. It will cause an enemy to bleed. And it will also do critical hits on a rooted target. So this is great. Like I was mentioning earlier, if you have seismic strike in the backpack, um, you can root an enemy with that and then you know, with Porky Pack in the backpack, and then you can then use the shark to get crits. Use it with Wolf Trap. There's a bunch of other things you can do. Personally, I use it sometimes. I don't use it that often. Um, again, I feel like there are other better survival items for me, um, so I don't necessarily lean towards it, but in certain situations, it's cool. Um, and the fact that the third hit literally throws a shark across the screen is really cool. I think it's great, so. As in, I think it's a great idea. I just personally <laughs> just don't use it all the time. Wrecking Ball. Yo. Wrecking Ball is wild. So this is another item that you can get from the servants. Um, I think I think I pronounced Calliope. She's the first servant that you fight. Um, in the final fight, you want to keep her alive. So you kill Cleo and you kill the archer. Um, you kill Uterp, so that way Calliope is the last one alive, and you get the Wrecking Ball. I first got this, and I was like, oh my god, this weapon is so slow. It's so slow, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't do what I want it to do. It's really hard to trigger that fourth attack, because it takes so long. I watched a video, I can't remember who it was, and I can't remember where I saw it. It might have been on Reddit, it might have been on YouTube, I can't remember. Somebody posted a video full of Wrecking Ball tech. And what you can do with this is you can actually throw this through the smaller walls. So if there's a wall that's like one tile big, you can throw it through there. And once I learned that, I started having so much fun with this thing. I really, really like the Wrecking Ball. Like you can probably tell like as I started talking about it, I started, I slowed down. I slowed down and I said, dude, my god <laughs> whatever i said it's really again it's slow it takes a little while to get used to but if you start to understand how to like throw this thing around the level and how to manipulate yourself through the platform so that way the wrecking ball will go through multiple enemies at once it's it's super cool totally worth it next up is the queen's rapier so this is another um uh, Queen in the Sea. This is the final item, melee item from that DLC. It's interesting because it will trigger an attack that does like that little, that quote, what do they call it? A reality slice? 
I think. Yeah, they do a reality slice. So you'll hit an enemy with the sword. It will then do another attack that qualifies as a ranged attack that kind of like slices the reality a bit, just like in the queen fight. So you'll see an enemy kind of like wherever it hits, it'll like almost look like it's warping a little bit. I think this thing's great. It does decent damage. It's a little bit slow. Um, for some reason, I don't know why I do this. I just, I just do it. I'll pop it in the backpack just because when I roll through enemies, it will do that crit. I get the cool effect. It looks interesting. Doesn't do a ton of damage that way, but I really like it. Um, and even if I'm not putting it in the backpack, I do tend to take this a lot. I think it's really fun. It's a cool item. All right. We have made it to the end, my friends. We are here. So we only have six melee items left. These are all from the Return to Castlevania DLC. So I'm going to put this at the end here. They're all interesting. So I'm, I'm even old. I may be a little bit older than some of the folks that are watching this video. I grew up with Castlevania. I played the old Castlevania on the NES. I've played through all the NES Castlevanias when I was younger, super Castlevania, huge Symphony of the Night fan. Uh, when they localized Rondo of Blood for, I think it was the Dracula X Chronicles on PSP, I played that. I have a Castlevania soundtrack collection. I'm a big fan of Castlevania. So for me, this DLC represented a nexus of something old that I was very close to and something relatively new, as in like, you know, the past several years that I'm, rel I'm very close to. So to see these both together, it was really interesting. I think they did a great job with the DLC overall. I think the items, uh, if you are not a Castlevania fan, the items might be interesting, kind of cool. But like as someone who's used these items in the actual games that they came from, it was like, it blew my mind. So first up is the Morning Star. So this is, you want to talk about, I was talking earlier about homages to other games, like talking about how great it was with the pure nail and how honest and true the homage was to hollow knight like this is unlocked by putting in the konami code so if you don't know what the konami code is this is um a code that was used in old nintendo games that used to grant it was like a cheat code right so there's a game called contra which you may have heard of it's like a side scrolling shooter game if you input the konami code on the title screen you'll get 30 lives right there's a shooting game called gradius and if you input the konami code while it's paused or something you can get extra items and extra stuff like that those those clever folks <laughs> over at evil empire actually ended up putting the konami code in the game and that's how you unlock this item so you will not find a blueprint of this you'll not find it in in the level you need to manually put the code in up up down, down, left, right, left, right, roll, jump, right? Or BA. Super cool. As long as you have the DLC installed, you can unlock this. And the other thing is that you can do this once a run. Super wild. This is So just that on its own, the fact that you can spawn this at will is puts this in a completely different, different ball game than any other weapon because this is the only other item. This is the only item in the game that you can actually drop when you want it. You can do it once a run. Really interesting. I use this sometimes and MA. So it's really fun because basically it's like old school Castlevania where you have a whip, you can attack with it. And then if you hold the button, the whip will drop. So back in the Castlevania games, what you would do is you'd use the whip, you'd let it drop, and then you can swing it around to like get projectiles and stuff like that. You can do that here with, I'm sorry. Oh, interesting, interesting, interesting. So what you can do with this is you can use that main attack, hold the button to allow the whip to kind of like drop and then use your directional pad to, or joystick to then direct the whip in different directions. So it's really interesting because the ball of the, the Morning Star will do a critical hit. So what you can do is you can almost like 
wiggle the control stick in order to get the the morning star to kind of like do this sort of motion and then it will do a ton of little crits i think it's super cool really unique again it's the only item that you can manually drop in the game as an old castlevania fan this was like really cool to see i think its utility might be questionable but i do like to use it every once in a while so i think it's cool Next up is the Bible. So Bible is weird. Bible's super weird. And this is tactics survival based. And it's interesting because you hit an enemy twice with it. And then the next swing will have a circular, like a book, a Bible will start to circle around you. And this was, I forget which Castlevania this was originally introduced in, but I think in Symphony of Night, this was one of the skills that you could get, but it's cool. Um, the circular, attacks that happen around you are considered range so you can use point blank with that um, the fact that it's survival is great because you know if you're opening yourself up you can take berserker you know you can have extra hp with soldiers resistance whatever whatever it may be to kind of like uh counteract a little bit of the slower more um the the the, the, the quote you know like the regular survival downsides to a weapon super interesting um i think you can have up to five Bibles, maybe. Um, there's a lot of Bibles that you can have. So, and I think there's actually an achievement attached to it if you have five Bibles spinning around you at once. So it's really cool. As you hit it, pages go flying everywhere. The animation on the item's great. And again, this is just another, I might be, you know, fanboying out a little bit here because I am such a big Castlevania fan, but I think the way that they implemented this item was incredibly respectful and it's really fun. Um, and my girlfriend says that this reminds her of a pizza box. So sometimes she walks by and she's like, oh, are you playing with the pizza? I'm like, yep, playing with the pizza. So Bible's cool. Whip sword. So this is a two handed item that is, uh, I'm pretty sure it's from the Aria, Dawn of Sorrow, Aria of Sorrow, uh, Castlevania games where basically it's a sword and it's a whip. So what you do is that you'll swing with the sword with the primary attack. The secondary attack is this transformation thing, and what it will do is it will change it from the sword to the whip, or the whip to the sword. After you do the change, it will do criticals for one and a half seconds. This item requires a lot of tech, in my opinion. It requires tech to get the criticals, you do not have a shield, so you're exposing yourself. The sword and the whip forms have like different ranges so the attacks are a little bit differently so it does require more th and more thinking than just like a regular sort of brutality weapon but i think that's what makes it special i think that's what makes it something unique um i've i'm not gonna lie i i take this <laughs> i do take this decently i lose runs a lot to this because i still haven't gotten completely into the groove of getting you know switching between the items getting those crits, you know, protecting myself. Um, but I think it's really fun. I think it's a cool item. There it is, middle, middle, middle usage tier for that one. Vampire Killer. Vampire Killer is the iconic Castlevania item. It is the whip that can kill Dracula. It is classic the initial song from castlevania that i'm sure most of you folks have heard at some point you know dun, 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 do, 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 do. that song is called vampire killer it's it's awesome i will take this a lot and what's cool about this is not only is it like incredibly faithful to the castlevania whips of yore it does critical hits on burning enemies, and if it kills an enemy, it will do burning on the ground, right? Yeah, enemies killed by this weapon will burn the ground under them. So pair this with like, I don't know, toss toss firebrands as your secondary or fire grenade or whatever, um, and you do some, some big damage. Um, it's super interesting to me that this is both brutality and tactics, um, probably because there are some fire sources and tactics that might, um, that can kind of proc things too, even though there's some shared with brutality, but vampire killers. Awesome. Um, I don't always take it because it is a little bit slow for brutality weapon. Um, I think it's, I think it's super cool. It's, 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 it's wild. And again, you know, just me growing up with Castlevania and having this experience, 
to play a game that I've played, you know, three, four thousand hours, whatever it's been, to then have Castlevania music and items and enemies in it, like, blows my mind. And like, yeah, you know, the DLC levels get a little long. <laughs> Dracula's Castle's a little long. The skeletons do a little bit more damage than, you know, you'd expect, but if you've ever played an old Castlevania game, you'll know that there are skeletons that throw bones at you in that arc, and they can take you out in like three or four hits, so I guess it's, you know, it's canon, but, you know, it's great. Great game. Castlevania's awesome. Dead Cell's awesome. Love it. Vampire Kill is great. If you haven't used it, I recommend checking it out. Two more. Death's Scythe. So, this item will create a ghost behind you if you kill an enemy with it and then that ghost will kind of like explode it'll like kind of like zoom around and then explode on an enemy dealing a critical hit and that's considered a ranged attack so you could take this with point blank if you wanted to this item is very good personally it's too visually distracting um i find that the ghosts that spawn behind you like they they, it's almost like they're walking at half pace. They kind of like fly around a lot. Like I don't, I don't prefer to use this weapon based solely on that. Again, this is subjective opinion. I do not take this item often. And I'm putting the caveat to that by saying it is a good item. It's very good. I personally just don't use it that often. Um, if you haven't checked it out and you haven't unlocked it yet, do it. I think it's going to be really interesting because it's another item that is unlike anything else that has come before it. The fact that you can turn enemies into ghosts and then weaponize those enemies is absolutely wild. So cool. Finally, <laughs> last and absolutely not least is the Alucard Sword. I'm not going to pull any punches. I take this thing all the time. I love it. I love it. I love it. This is another movement based item. So as you swing, if an enemy is like maybe mid range, so think like about half a screen away, maybe a little bit less, this will teleport you behind the enemy to do a critical hit. And then after that, I think the next two hits are also critical or the next three hits, I should say. Um, yep. So the first hit is critical and then the next three hits are critical. So if you're just attacking up close, it just does a little bit of damage. It's kind of like a slower Hitori's Katana. If you teleport behind an enemy and you get that critical, the next three hits are critical, even if it's not on that enemy, right? So if there's an enemy that you kill with that first hit, the next three hits within a certain window will do critical damage. So you can get a lot of crits on this really quickly. I tend to take this towards brutality just because I'll pair it with the combo mutation. Um, you know, I'll pair it even with like Hunter's Instinct because I feel like I kill enemies pretty quickly with this thing so I can get cools down on my skills pretty quick. I love this item. This is, I know I said we're not putting favorites <laughs> and I'm just, I'm doing things alphabetically, but at this point on Sunday, November 26th, 2023 dead cells version 3.4 alucard sword is my favorite item my favorite melee item in the entire game i will use this thing all the time i think it's fantastic you can find it by uh rolling through uh a secret area in the richter mode in the castlevania dlc so in order to get to richter mode you need to go through the castlevania dlc first at the beginning of the game then you need to go through it after beating the timekeeper or during a different run. Find Richter. So there's like one passageway. It's usually on the right hand side and it kind of like goes up, goes up some stairs and there's not a teleporter really nearby. There's a pedestal that you can go on and I think it says question mark with the action item or teleport or whatever. You step on the pedestal, you hit the action item. It brings you to an upside down version of the castle, which is another Symphony of the Night big symphony that I homage and then you talk to Richter you break him out of a cage and he's like hey thanks and you say cool see ya the next time you're in the cat Dracula's castle after beating the timekeeper if you go back to that area you can hop in the cage and it brings you to Richter mode which is basically Castlevania you play as Richter you go through <laughs> it's like a basically like a tiny baby mini Castlevania game 
towards the end of that, there's a really long corridor that you're climbing up and there's a wall that you can roll through on the right. You can see the secret area. Alucard's there. You walk up to him. He drops a blueprint and then you can unlock one of my favorite items in the game. I think it's fantastic. I, I, I'm clearly super stoked about it. I just went through so much. <laughs> I just talked so much about how to unlock it and what it does. Um, I love Alucard's sword. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I'm really glad that I'm able to end this tier list on a high note because, um, yeah, it's awesome. So taking a moment to reflect and just kind of like looking at all of these things, what I'm seeing from my perspective is that everything here even as I'm looking at the stuff I don't really use that often, I'm looking at the trident, I'm looking at Assassin's Dagger, thinking about Tentacle, everything's viable, right? It may not be perfect, right? Assassin's Dagger might not is not great against an enemy without a back. It's not great against Conjunctivius, but like, you pair Phaser with it, and it's great, you know? Alucard's sword, I'm talking it up to death, but like, you know, there might be situations where you can't get that teleport in, right? You're fighting a boss and you're pinned up against a wall and you're just doing minimal damage. So maybe it's not that great in that situation, right? So everything here, again, this is just the my personal usage of it. It's not S to F. It's just, do I use something a lot? Do I use it sometimes? Do I not use it that often? Etc. And like looking back on this, I'm I'm excited to to <laughs> I'm excited to stop recording and go downstairs and turn on my PS5 and just play around the dead cells and just enjoy some of these things again. Um, you know, one of the things that has kept me connected to this game for so long, despite all the you know how fluid it is and how fun it is, is just like every option that's presented to you. Excuse me, every option that's presented to me causes me to pause even if it's just for a split second where i see the giant killer come out of a chest and i know i want to recycle it but i think do i want to recycle it the answer is yes i, I do sometimes i don't right so every item causes me to stop and think and to me that's the sign of an amazingly designed and well thought out game for the most part things are not mindless with dead cells right you can sure you can run through a level and do your swift sword velocity, you know, all that stuff and just kind of kill things here and there. But all of these items, every time you put something into a slot, every time you go to a shop, every time you open a chest, right? Every time an item drops from a boss or you get a legendary, there's a moment of pause. There's a moment of pause where the player thinks, or where I should say where I think, do I want to put this in my build? Do I want to add this to what I already have? Do I want to change my build? Right. If I, you know, again, like if I get a Seda stiletto that has bonus to poison and I have a thing that does poison and I can get bleeding, like, do I want to shift in that direction? Right. Maybe, maybe not. But either way you slice it, however many items I just went through and talked through, they're all cool. They're all worth checking out. They're all worth going in the training room, figuring out if you like them or not. And honestly, like, it may be worth you yourself just for your own edification, you know, to hop on Tier Maker, find a Dead Cells tier list, and just think to yourself, all right, like, how would I rank these items, right? How do, have I used flashing fans? Like, do I like that? Is that S tier for me? Is that C tier? Is that something I would use all the time? You know, because I think that will also kind of like get things moving, like get the thoughts going and sort of open up your mind even a little bit more to see how other items can kind of come in and change your play style, right? So this was very interesting for me. Hopefully it was interesting for you. I know there were some parts where I kind of dipped, <laughs> where I was like trying to like trying to talk about flashing fans. It was like looking at a concrete wall. I was just like, uh, it's a it's a it's a weapon. You can use it. I don't know. 
But hopefully this was interesting for you. Um, you know, if you enjoyed this, please let me know in the comments because what I can do and is go through the next sections. I can go through melee, excuse me. <laughs> I can go through ranged. I can go through shields and skills, etc. Just to kind of like talk about every item, give my own personal perspective, um, you know, let you folks know what I use and how often I use it. And, you know, again, looking at this tier list, like knowing like where I personally need to improve and, you know, try things out a little bit more. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed this. This has been fun. Um, so as always, thank you for watching and good luck out there.